We are live. Welcome to Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, here with a late night special, rocking with my co-host here, Ryan Ketchins. See, this is the thing, man. I really like the late night special. Let me move my mic real quick. I like the late night special, but yeah. I didn't realize how much work it is, man, because we bringing y'all the deepest conversations probably in the world right now. Yeah, we, I we, think we're going crazy. Look, no bars, hell, y'all. Y'all know this past week, the consistent theme, we've been talking divorce. I'm talking about some of the realest conversations I have ever heard. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we like to we like to really dive in deep. But this time, I mean, because mostly we spoke about, you know, people's firsthand experience. So yeah. we got into the drama. We got into the transformations. <clears throat> but I think it's now we go expert level. We go yeah. expert level, y'all. So we hitting it from every possible angle. You heard from the wives. You heard from the husbands. So let me go ahead and introduce who we got for y'all here today. Yes. We've done it again. Let's start here to my left. Put the camera on this baddie right here. We have found you guys, not only one of the most qualified, but the baddest divorce attorney <laughs> here in the land, especially in Atlanta. You practice, is it, is it, is it Atlanta only right now? Georgia only? Georgia only. So listen, if you're going through some, we got resources here at the table here for you. We rocking with the breakup lawyer herself, Brittany. Welcome to the welcome to the platform. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. We've actually had Brittany on a, on a show in the past. But if you um, this is your first time tuning in, trust me, you're gonna get a wealth of game here tonight. And now let me introduce my brother here to the right. Yeah, man. Yes. We are rocking here with this brother here, Rob, man. Rob has a profile. I'm talking about a ton of game is going to come from this man here. This brother here has been actually teaching men how to date, how to get their life back, how to get their identity, yeah. their swag back after divorce. And if I'm not mistaken, Rob, you've actually been in the uh, divorce at this point. Is it is it th on three occasions? Twice. Twice. I Twice. threw one in there. I, always, yeah. I got a tendency yeah. to just... Well, divorce be exactly. time is extra level. Yeah, third time is a charm, they say, right? Okay. okay. I don't know if that's happening just yet, uh, but thank you for having me again, man. Yes, I appreciate yes. you, brothers, and the platform is going crazy everywhere. Yes. Like, the algorithm is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we are all over your timelines, <laughs> yeah, your man. mama timeline, your daddy's, but that's because <laughs> we're bringing y'all what you need. Yeah. And today here, y'all, today we got an excellent topic, y'all. We got an excellent topic. Because we've had, again, the conversation of divorce from so many angles. So yeah. I want to get an objective opinion this time. We bring in an expert to the table so we can have this conversation um, from uh, through, uh, through the lens of somebody really in the trenches, yeah. supporting the people, supporting the families, facilitating the actual process itself. So, man, I got I have definitely identified some questions for you. But before we get into it, Ryan, talk to the people. Tell them what we got going on right now. So this is the thing, guys. We went crazy last week. We actually got 16 members. Or well, not even last week. This was Monday. I'm getting things off track. It's but fast. Monday, we got 16 members. So that officially puts us at 72 YouTube channel members. Now, this wow. is the thing. For all of our members, we are gradually building this thing up because we want to be very explosive with the type of content you bring. So be patient with us. But look, any new members, we welcome you to join us as well tonight because this is the thing. Anybody who supports the channel will have an investment into the channel. This means yes. that you will guide the type of content that we produce, the mm -hmm. events that we put on, and everything else in between. And guys, plus, I mean, we, we, we're trying to bring you the best guests and the best content, so why not support okay. the movement? And listen, y'all yeah. actually asked us for a divorce attorney. So we went and did this here for y'all, and we prepared some questions. Shout out to the members. Shout out to the members actively helping us prep for this show. I appreciate you guys. Hopefully we hit 100 this episode. Let's see how crazy we can get. And yes, y'all, within, I mean, the show just started. We already got over 100 people here. So we're going to go ahead go. and get this thing rocking, rocking. But um, man, I, I want to talk about the reasons that this is happening. Why This divorce culture that we're in, I want to dig into the why behind it. A bit because we heard both sides of men and women giving their own testimonies but now i want to hear from you let's start on just why you see these divorces happening in the first place i want to talk about some of the common causes that you see 
um, yeah, families being in the divorce court for it. So tell me about that, Brittany. Um, so I think <clears throat> if we're talking about my personal experience, I think that that's a lot deeper than what you'll be able to Google, right? But um, naturally, I think the actual reasons that people cite for divorce are usually adultery, right? That's usually the main thing people say. And then irreconcilable differences, right? And it, the irreconcilable differences is the part that's a little tricky because that's where we get into what I think my, pers <laughs> my personal reason and experience is with people that are getting divorces. I think adultery is obviously a breach of your marital contract, right? So cheat on your spouse, they're either going to stay or they're going to leave. And I think we're in this culture where cheating has become normalized, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are just doing it. You see it all over the internet. You see reels about it, memes about it, where people just kind of talk about cheating very openly and make it kind of a normal thing that happens. And what I've noticed, even in the actual divorce proceeding, that judges are not punishing cheating the way that they were back in the day. Wow. Right? So... It is something that's become more normalized, but it's also something that people are not tolerating as often anymore either. So that definitely contributes to the reason that people are leaving their marriages. Absolutely. Um, reconcilable differences, though. I find that to be, I'm tired. I don't like the way you communicate. Um, I feel like we've grown apart. And I think those are the things that are a little tricky in my mind because people have become comfortable with thinking that there's always something else out there mm. and there's always something better and I can just get another one, right? Not understanding that you don't get to 35 years of marriage without going through five years of not liking your spouse mm -hmm. and who they are, right? So when people say, I want to be married and I want a long-term relationship or long-term marriage, do you really? Because if you did, then that time frame in which you decided you didn't like them wouldn't be your reason for getting a divorce, right? You would have to grow with your partner through that time. But instead, they come see me and they cite irreconcilable differences. Wow. And they want to walk away. So let's uh, um, let's let's unpack that because I, I, I know the adultery, the mm -hmm. reconcilable differences. It, it, it is very gray. Yes. That does seem very gray. And that is an issue. Yes. Now, when it comes to the adultery... Is it typically the men committing adultery? Is it the women, or do you actually get to see a different angle of it? It's the men. It's typically the men actually committing Most adultery. Most of the time, yes. Okay. And you, the funny thing is, men are not leaving their women for cheating. Wow. I mean, really? Not. So the women, the <laughs> no. women are also cheating, but men are not leaving their women for no, cheating. No, men don't leave their women for cheating. I'd be damned. <laughs> I mean, it's but you know, and you know, everybody's talking tough online about that. Oh, All the guys Everybody are talking talks tough. tough yeah. online, but the men are not leaving their women for cheating. No, they're not. No, why, they're not. Why are the women leaving? Because women have been conditioned to believe that if your man cheats, you leave. And that's okay. Like, wow. if that's what you want to do. Say that's that. good for business. I mean, listen, it's not about, <laughs> my, I don't, I wouldn't tolerate it. My, the way that my mind is set up, I just, I'm an overthinker. I couldn't do it. Right. So, I understand why women leave, but society has actually conditioned us to say men, women are loyal, men are cheaters. If your man cheats on you, you leave him. Men do not leave their women. Wow. Yo, that is so yeah. consistent with the conversations we've been having. Yeah. We yeah. had a whole panel of men on here mm -hmm. and a whole panel of women totally separately. Didn't want to put them in the same room. Mm -hmm. Didn't want to skew none of the answers. They were all married or either had been married. Mm -hmm. Most of them were actively married. Mm -hmm. Ask the men about divorce, their philosophy. The men was absolutely anti-divorce. It, right. no, it was no exceptions. Right. The women, when I asked them if it was off the table, it was like, well, it just depends. Right. It, it depends on if this happened. It, it depends on if that happened. But and, Tashan, you also have to look at the inequity in a relationship, right? Men and women are not equal. Like, I mean, y'all do what y'all want with that comment. Ooh, but piss them off real I'm quick. I'm sorry, right? We're not created equal, okay. right? So when you are in a relationship as a woman with a man who 
has a higher pay rate than you normally, despite you being more educated than him. He is mm. stronger than you physically, right? He is respected more than you when you are just off rip. That's just the world that we live in. So when you have that inequity in a relationship and you have a woman who's normally your dependent spouse in some way, even the women who are breadwinners are still dependent on their man mm -hmm. for something as it relates to their yeah. marriage, right? So when you have that inequity there, men are able and unfortunately usually have the upper hand in relationships and they can kind of do what they want, right? Wow. They can do what they want. And a lot of men do what they want in their relationships. They're not leaving a woman. They're not leaving a wife. Why would they leave? This is my gonna, wife. They're going to make this up. The next one bad too. Right. She's my wife. She's not going anywhere. This is my woman. I'm going to kind of do what I want. I'm going to live. And it's not necessarily being abusive or anything like that. But like, if I don't want to change this thing she doesn't like about me, I'm not going to do it. I like how I am. And I mean, I do happen. think that is for a form of abuse, though, yeah, because you is. know what yeah. you are responsible for as a husband and, you know, and, and as a wife. So if you're not performing that duty, I do think it is a form of abuse. But I'm not actually when I think about it, I'm not surprised by that, because when we had the three pan three guys on our panel. Make sure you all watch that. That was part one of should I stay in a relationship? And each three of our men, they communicated that. It's no way like divorce is not an option, right. but they also communicated that they were the accountable party or the majority of accountable party in the situation as well. Because yeah. I do think at the end of the day, if a, if a woman cheats, unless she's just a no way, don't say floozy, <laughs> <laughs> unless she's just a floozy, then I think a lot of it does go back on the man. And I'm curious because, because yeah. Rob, with, with your specific situation, yeah, who filed divorce in the two? Um, chief, uh, I've been married twice. Okay. First of all, first time I got married was 21. Uh, so I asked for it, but she filed the second time I filed, but I asked for them on both instances. You asked for it. I did. So that's a different case. Mm -hmm. That's a different case. I did. Uh, well, you know, at 21, obviously, uh, you know, I didn't know, uh, I wasn't prepared. You know, and, and of course, now at 47, um, I look at marriage differently. Uh, I look at it more as a business because there is a contract involved. Right. And, and there's a contract to get into it. And then there's paperwork to get out of it. Absolutely. So it is a business 100 percent. Now, if we get into the spiritually spiritual aspect, emotional, I look at that more as a covenant or an agreement between the two um, under God. So that's where I'm at at 47. But. Um, back then, man, I wanted to get married for uh, stability. Mm -hmm. I wanted to prove that I can be a leader in the household. Mm -hmm. um, my my parents have been married for over 47 years, and they're still together in their 80s. And so I wanted what they had, but I had no idea what they went through mm. to get to where they got and to continue uh, where they were going. So, uh, you know, so the first time um, I filed because I just felt like, uh, I married a stranger. Uh, we we kind of just did it. You know, we got married under three months. Wait, wait. I want to get some clarity on this real quick because uh -huh. we got shout out to King Anderson. But he said uh, he said asking for it and actually doing it aren't the same in my opinion. So when you mm. said you asked for it, yeah. are you saying that you were you initiated the filing for it? Well, uh, I told her that I did not want to be married anymore. But doesn't that get said in marriage? Right. Like, don't you get pissed off and throw that around? No, no, no. Oh, no. Why would though. you do that? Because they said, literally, we had a whole panel where he said they were threatening it all the time. They were yeah. threatening divorce. The, the yeah. men or the women were threatening? Both. Them. They both threatened divorce during wow. the marriage. Like, okay. Okay. And based upon what we, wow. what we was hearing, I think threatening divorce is like, it's like, even when you're in a relationship, man, I'm, I'm about to leave. You. Like, yeah. that happens. Right. So so that for happens. me, after, after that conversation, um, she moved out. I asked her to leave. So she moved out. So that was like the process. Out. So first off, he, I did. Said, hey, he said, I have to leave. So Rob tried to, make, he tried to make everything, you know, it's a, it's, it's a collaborative effort. So you told her you wanted to get out of a relationship and then you kicked out the house. <laughs> I persuaded her right to combo. leave. Okay. I persuaded her to leave. It, it, meaning it, it's not going to be beneficial if you stay. So, mm. Robin, why didn't you file or initiate? The why uh, she beat me to the punch? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, she beat me, she beat me to the punch, and uh, she went through that process before I could, um, and that was strategic on her part as well. Because and let good oh, good yes yes let's good talk point. About yeah. that. So let's 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 come over here to the break of lawyer. So, what is the benefit of, of, filing. of filing first? Um. 
I always want to be the petitioner or the one who files first because you get to control the story and the narrative and have that person defend against yeah. what you're saying. That's a good point. It's funny because I, I'm actually, you know, I, I do firearm training. Uh -huh. And uh, within my first few months, I'm also reading and also, you know, practicing at the range and um, learning about law and self-defense. And that and they that's what they tell you when you are in, in something where it requires you to use a firearm in self-defense. They said the first person to call the police is the victim. Correct. So they tell you to shoot, then run to the phone and call the police. So right. I think that's kind of messed up, right? I mean, is that fair? I mean, it is what it is, right? If I'm the petitioner, I move the case at my pace, right? I'm the one who gets to file first. Mm -hmm. I get to hit you with the paperwork first. I get to send you the questions that you need to answer first. It's called discovery. I get to move the case along based on what my strategy is. When you're the defendant, you're basically taking all the punches that I throw at you and yeah. trying to defend yourself against whatever I say. Yeah. So if Rob, you and I are married and I say he's a cheater and a liar and I claim adultery, you have to show the court why you're not an adulterer. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. She's lying. I never cheated on her. I never this. I never that. But if I have some sex messages that allude to you being inappropriate with right. some women and I get on the stand and I say he did this, he did that, he did this, he did that. And you don't have any proof as to what I'm saying is a lie. Then mm -hmm. the court may believe what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's the benefit of it. Yeah. Now, I'm I'm very curious. So when people come to you, yes. Brittany, when they come to you, is it all the way over? Or no. is it just we no. we kind of thinking about it? Um, no. And one thing that I always do with my clients is I ask them, where are you emotionally? Are you ready to have this conversation with me? And sometimes people come sit in my chair that think they're ready and they're not. And sometimes people come sit in my chair and they start the process and then they back out of it. Right. And I always have that conversation with them about filing for divorce and serving your partner is a very traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK. Very. And serving. I've only seen like the movies where it's somebody like pretend to be a piece of delivery man and then they like go to the job. <laughs> Let and me tell you something. I got some of the best process servers in Atlanta, Kyle Hudson. Shout out to him. And he will hide in the bushes. Wow. wow. So yeah. it might be any time it might he pop will off. Put a lawn chair outside in your front yard. Yo, funny story. When I was a kid, <laughs> I was actually in high school. My my parents got divorced. Mm -hmm. I remember opening the door for the strange man that knocked. Mm -hmm. And I remember him saying, Hey, is um so and so home? And it like I I'm right. so smart, even as a kid, but the way his energy was, like he asked a few questions before, I can't remember, mm. but he warmed me up so smooth uh -huh. and just threw it. Hey, by the way, is someone so home? I was like, yeah. He said, give me this for me. I took that piece of paper. And first of all, when I knew, I didn't even know what the hell it was as a kid, but I knew this was some shit. <laughs> I knew just looking at it, oh, I got man. myself into some shit. Uh -huh. And the funny thing was, he was my, actually my stepdad. When I gave it to him, he was pissed at me. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> so he's like, what the hell? What the hell are you doing over the door, dude? Right, correct. But it's funny. So it's the the, the- the law won't allow that now, though. You have to serve someone that's over the age of 18. You can't serve on children. Oh, that's a recent change. No, well, I don't know. What state were you living in at the time? No, that was Atlanta. This was- okay. I was oh, literally- yeah, no. You have to be 18. Oh, shit. We could have yeah, fought that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, he didn't know. He didn't I mean, know. I don't know how long ago that was. We'll talk about, you know, you're a little old, honey. So it might <laughs> okay, so, so, Brittany, they come to you for a divorce. Uh -huh. And uh, sometimes they're ready, sometimes they're not. And is it like a, is the first session, is it them coming in and just asking questions about divorce? Or is it usually like, yo, they come with the, the therapy, like they need therapy when they come to you kind of deal? It's a mix. Like, I have some clients that are like, hey, I'm done. So what do we need to do? Like my consultations are an hour. I've got clients that are ready to sign up and pay within the first 30 minutes. They're yeah. like, I'm done. I'm ready to go. Then I have some clients where it takes an hour and 15 minutes, right? Because they, they have all these questions. They want to know about the process. They want to know about this. And those clients, I usually ask some questions. Have you been to couples counseling? Have you been to marriage counseling? Yeah. Right. When is the last time you had sex with your spouse, right? When is, do y'all do activities together to find out if their marriage is repairable, right? Because- right. If it is, I don't want to start this process with you only to end up once we're three months in. Now you're like, oh, I don't know. And maybe we can work it out. And, and that's fine. But like I said, going through the divorce process and pulling those papers out and handing them to your spouse is a traumatic experience. You can't take it back. So don't do it if you're not ready. Because even if you reconcile, you still have to 
repair the step that you took to completely yeah. end your marriage and relationship. Yeah. So here's so here's my thing. Oh. We talked about the adultery. You said that men are not leaving their women. They're usually not, unless they're leaving for another woman. Unless they're leaving See, for another now that's woman. A, that's a curveball. Now, is that, now, so if that comes up in court, uh -huh. is that something that can aid a woman's case if she can prove that yes. he's leaving for another woman? Yes. Why is that beneficial in court? Um, depending on the county and the case, and excuse me, the county and the judge, um, adultery is a thing, right? It's law. It's a criminal offense in the state of Georgia. It's never really prosecuted, but it's definitely a huge thing in civil cases. Um, but when we're talking about equitable division, right? So the process in which you split up your assets, anything that's marital, non-marital, et cetera, conduct is heavily considered, right? So what you do or don't do in your marriage your poor behavior in your marriage, if you're abusive, if you're a cheater, all of that comes up. And the more evidence I have of it and can prove what you did yeah, can aid in my case in saying, hey, I need 70% of the equity in the house and you get 30 because you forced me to divorce you because you were screwing Betty Lou down the street, right? While we were together for 35 years, I haven't worked in 25 years and I, it's going to be harder for me to start my life over and mm -hmm. I need more of the proceeds from the house or I need more out of your 401k or I need more in alimony or I need yeah. more in this because you forced me out of my marriage by your poor behavior. So, Rob, let, let me because yeah. this is I want to get messy with you, man. Yeah, yeah. You, you've been Let's through two it, divorces. Yes. So in either one of them. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you knew you want to get divorced before you before before they brought it up. You knew you yeah, want to get divorced. I did. Yeah. Did you, was there some kind of setup, some kind of, you know, plotting along the way where you was like, hey, now that I know I want to get a divorce, I'm going to start collecting these receipts. I'm going to start setting some things up. I just want you to be real mm -hmm. so I can possibly paint a bad light on, on your, you know, your, I mean, I'm not sure what the statute of limitations on this is, but <laughs> <laughs> did you honestly, did you consciously try to plant some situations or put yourself in a situation where you'll look better? Did you save the receipts? Uh, I did not, uh, I, but I had some. Right, but I did not. So I mean, at 21, we was married for five years, um, and and I think it got to the point to where you know we both was like, the expiration date is is any moment now. So there wasn't any resistance um, for that. But I would say that you know the first time around, she had it pretty good though. So she had it pretty good to where when it came down to the, uh, divorce, uh, and I wish I had a a a, a, a Brittany. You know what I'm saying? Uh, because I didn't know not going to the court uh, or not answering and things like that, not finding out what the address is and things like that was going to hurt me in terms of, you know, having a bad deal. And, you know, so that was the main thing. But I, I didn't have any. Uh, I had some. But, you know, my thing was, well, she, she ain't got she ain't got none. And I don't really have. So anything. you didn't cheat. It was no cheating on um, your hands. Oh yeah, I did. I checked out. Okay. For, yeah, I, I definitely checked out. Um, and she was no longer at the house, mm. right? So she was no longer at the house, and so you know, at that point, I was like, you know, I'm doing whatever doing I want to do, right? That's separate. And but that's still that's still, that's still, that's still, and, cheating? And still cheating. Still, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So absolutely. Wait, so what's the what's the separation in post separation conduct in the state of Georgia can still be considered. If, and this is case law, if it uh, prevented the reconciliation of the parties in their marriage, right? So if you waited until you were separated and then you started cheating and you're flaunting around your new girlfriend and et cetera, et cetera, and mm -hmm. your divorce is pending and your spouse and you can't reconcile, then the court will consider it. So I always tell my clients, just wait. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Look, we got a super chat that just came in. I think it's just a very relevant question. So shout out to your next guest with this really relevant question regarding irreconcilable differences. Uh -huh. If a provider husband, mm -hmm. okay, is to provide spousal support after divorce, what is the woman to provide after divorce? If Is she the dependent spouse? She was a dependent spouse. What What is she supposed to provide? She has nothing to provide. That's why she's the dependent spouse and he's the providing spouse. Now, mm. if they're equal spouses, right, and she has a 401k and a savings mm -hmm. and, you know, money, then all of that gets split up between them during equitable division. But if you have a 
old school traditional marriage. Wife yeah. hasn't worked in 20 years and husband is a millionaire. What is she to provide? And 50 50 brothers there. winning right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> and it's funny, and it's funny, I think your next guest, I think that was he was being uh facetious. Is that, is that sure what they call yeah, that one? Because yeah, yeah. he know that your ex wife ain't gonna come and she's still cooking and cleaning the spot. Right. Right. <laughs> but go ahead, also, go ahead, I, I would also say that it's it's about you know, what you can provide, you know, meaning, you know, what you can prove, you know, even if, you know, she's been doing hair, you know, and getting cash and things like that. And, you know, he's been working a regular nine to five and, you know, uh, what has she been paying? What were the agreements in the household? Correct. You know, so those are things that have to be considered and in, taken into consideration. But again, me at the age of, tw- uh, by the time I was divorced, I was about 24, 25 years old. 26 i still didn't know what the hell was going on right uh there was there was things that i could have done differently um even through that divorce to where it would have been more so in my favor in terms of uh because we did have a child together right and so mm. so we uh uh one child together so that was part of the uh divorce decree you know um for, for the child support because we never had obviously we didn't have any type of child support enforcement and i didn't know at that time child support enforcement versus versus what we agree versus what's on paper and what's really happening right you know and so just having um an attorney would have been valuable just so i know uh that i don't have to take the shit you know mm. and i think that's oh, what you happens went to guys. no attorney no attorney wow. no attorney what boy so uh, Brittany, how many people actually are risky enough to face divorce without an attorney? And then tell me, <laughs> what is that a good idea? It's never a good idea. Ever. Ever. Man. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to read the paperwork. You don't know what the words mean. You don't know how to look up statutes. You have no idea of when you're supposed to respond to things. You have no idea of how you're going to waive an objection if you don't respond on time. Get a lawyer. Damn. Period. Always, yeah, yeah. whether you're going through a divorce, if you you don't try to fix yourself, if you break your foot at the house, right? You don't mm-hmm. try to DIY that. Right. Go, you go to the doctor. If you don't know what you're doing, you get served with any sort of lawsuit. Get a lawyer, please. Yeah, yeah. I wanna I, I wanna ask you about this too, um, Brittany. Because we was kind of talking about this a little bit before the show, but I, I think this is um, something that's very interesting mm-hmm. because you see a lot of things that really just that no nobody really sees that can come from the the underground behind the closet in the back door <laughs> of why these divorces are taking place but do you see quite often that it's literally some brothers out here like living and even women living like double lives yes so so give me give me some of like the more bizarre situations you you might have seen and in in, in, uh, that that you run into that causes some of these divorces and what's a, and what's a double life like what, they, yeah. what, what I, would you I consider know double life? Sean is getting that. I'm gonna try to not go there. So no, 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 no. We, we, we need to. We need to. We need to. Oh God. Um, double life could be like a different family. Okay. Right. Like okay. if you, especially for my work overseas brothers, yeah. I got a few oh. work overseas brothers, and I mean, oh, old they work family. overseas and they got a family overseas. Correct. Right. Wife in the states. He's stroke overseas. overseas. Wow. Correct. Wow. Right. My work overseas brothers. They. They. Global. That when I mean double life, I mean double life. Come home, take care of home in, in the states. Go back to their home wherever they are. Um, go ahead, girl. You good? Touch on. <laughs> no, no. Listen, listen. You a I, yo, it, baby. I want y'all to drop a yes in the chat if you demand that the breakup lawyer keeps it one thousand. Keeps it one thousand, man. Million. We are all in this The yes is coming. The yes is coming. I need, I need, I need ten yeses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gonna be a lot more than that. And yeah. shout out to the chat. Listen, twenty-eight minutes in, over three hundred and twenty people live in the chat right wow. now, guys. Monday we hit a record at five thirty, guys. Let's get six hundred tonight because. Brittany's really about to take us there. Let's do it. What's what's the other double life that you see? I know you in Atlanta, so I'm getting an uh, idea of what you see anyway. So right. Let us know. Right. Um. Oh Lord, I'm gonna get canceled. So <laughs> there are a lot of I call them DL divorces that come oh, through no. my wow. doors. A lot, and I don't. I don't. Listen, your sexuality is whatever it is. I don't discriminate against. I would not think right. a man. But it's very unfair that we live in a world where people can't be themselves. Yeah. 
openly and honestly and comfortably so they create families and have relationships with people of the opposite sex and they may not want to but they do it because they feel like that's what they're supposed to do that's what society said is acceptable Mm. um so that's what i'm going to do and unfortunately it's usually when we say dl we're usually referring to men right um and that comes across my desk a lot wow okay so the men are actively engaging in homosexual activities right and the women find out somehow correct that always confused me. I guess are, are I'm just curious. Like, are these masculine men? Yes. Oh. Always. Wow. Wow. Always. always. So, so like you would not you would look at that brother and never know. Mm. Wow. wow. It's funny. Actually, somebody right now in the chat literally says, shout out to K Ann, says, Oh my God, a friend of mine is dealing with that too, and she's staying. So I want to know, I want to ask the women in the chat. Assuming that they had a husband who was taking care of the family and hope they had a good husband, would you leave if you found out that he was having a relationship with the opposite sex? Man. I want to know. You said that's a good question? I want to know. I wanna... Hold on. <laughs> this man is crazy. Shout out to the letter. But listen, that is incredible. And uh, I mean, because t- in my eyes, that is something that I, I mean, we hear about it, obviously, you know, on TV, we see it in the damn Tyler Perry movies, mm-hmm. Right. but you saying that this is, this is happening in real life. Oh, Does that happen on the other side with the ladies or is it really just the men? It's really just the men because unfortunately we live in a world where men think that, you know, they don't really have an issue with fluidity with women, right? Not unfortunately, right. like that's just normal, right? So women are not discriminated against with their sexuality as much as men are. Mm. And because of that, it's caused this environment where men can't be themselves and act out on who they are and their sexual desires and their attractions. Mm -hmm. So they do what they believe men should do, which is be with women, have children, get married. But the reality of it is what you like is what you like. And if you like something else, you're going to crave that and seek it out. And unfortunately, Mm -hmm. that is very damaging. Yo, wow. I just dropped a poll, all right? This is a hypothetical situation because I just I, I just really want to know how you guys think. So this is a situation. You got a good man. You got a good husband. You find out he's gay. You catch him in an affair. He comes out to you and reveals his desires or whatever the situation is. But he's a good man. He's taking care of you financially. Yeah. He's taking care mm-hmm. of you. He's showing you levels of affection. But he's gay. Are you leaving? Answer that poll, guys. We got over 376 people in the live. Wow. Let's get at least 100 votes on that. Are you leaving? Well, here's my question for y'all. Is a man who likes women and men considered gay? Yes. But he's not gay. He's bisexual. He's gay. But he's not gay. He's bisexual. He participates in homosexual acts. But he also participates in heterosexual acts. Right. He so just like sex. Bisexual. Yeah, you know, he's bisexual. Right. But in that definition, gay. But he's bisexual. <laughs> now here's the thing. Again, I don't have anything. Look, no problem to the gay community, gay followers, gay audience. Right. Live your life. Right. But in my eye, you, you said Tyshawn, my eyes. But Tyshawn, I think that's a part of the problem, right? Because when we hear the word gay, unfortunately to a lot of people, it still has that negative connotation to someone's manhood, right? Like, don't call me gay. You know, blah, blah, blah. And I think that if we actually started calling things what they actually are, that man is not only attracted to so men. If he's, he's so it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Okay, let, all right, better question. Okay. If you had a man that approached oh, you. I don't have nothing to do with this. <laughs> no, no, don't do that because you are too a part of the problem. Okay, go ahead. Right. If you were approached by a man who uh-huh. you knew were having sexual acts on both ends of the spectrum, men and women, uh-huh. actually, and I'll, I'll even give you one better. Mm-hmm. He actually preferred women, Over and men. he did not. It was just for fun with men, okay. but he wanted to build with a woman. Okay, but he did like to engage in sex with men. Would you consider him as a long-term partner? So I will say this. If there was a man who told me that he experimented with men, like maybe in his college years, high school years, trying to figure out his sexuality, it wasn't for him. Mm. He's only with women. I wouldn't have a problem with that because I think that for women to be able to kind of 
experiment with their sexuality to why they're figuring things out in their adolescent years or their early years and figure out what they like and it's no issue i don't see a problem with men doing it as well i could not date a man though that was currently having sexual relationships with men because i would feel insecure in that space like there's going to be something in you that i can't satisfy sexually because i just don't have the same body parts and i can't do the same things that a man can do for you, you. got a butthole yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a, I ain't got a dick. <laughs> oh, you yeah, that's important. Part. I ain't got a dick. Right, <laughs> yeah, you know, you know that, that's really interesting because, uh, first of all, I'm 100% heterosexual and I've never experienced any of that. Um, so however, however, how, however, however, you know, I, I think that it's the straddling of the fence is what a lot of women have an issue with, right? Because, like you said, at some point, this guy is going to crave a man. Mm -hmm. And I've dated a woman who was homosexual, right? And I never thought that she was bisexual or lesbian. I really didn't categorize her, but she told me, she told me straight up, she was like, you know, uh, you know, I love the presence and the uh, intimacy of a man, but from time to time, I crave a woman. She told me that, right? And so I was like, okay, so when you crave it, where am I supposed to be at? Mm. You know, and so I, I think for me, that was kind of a deal breaker. Well, we ain't last too long anyway, but that would have been a deal breaker if she had to have a one on one experience. Correct. So I think that's the same thing the that same you're saying. The same thing I'm saying, yeah. Although I think <sighs> the difference with me and a lot of other women is that any man that has ever experimented with their sexuality before, even like, like, like I said, if he, they did it and didn't like it and was like, hell no, that's not for me, yeah, they would consider him oh you're gay the fact that you even considered it is like oh it took no. us one time right. i mean but so let, let's be real it. about this now i think black women is uh -huh. kind of it's the oddest thing they are extremely critical when it comes to men engaging with other men as it relates to their their specific relationships i think that yes but when it comes to friendships they're usually that's like it, it's kind of it's, it's strange because it seems like black women really promote the homosexuality when it comes to friendships, right? They got the gay friend. They go through things with the gay friend. Almost mandatory to have one. Right, right. It's, it, that's very popular. But when it comes, to, but but then all of a sudden, if a man says, "Hey, I sleep with other men, but I also want to be with you," it's a complete lack of respect. It's like everything they thought about that man and who he could be is completely thrown out the window. Why do you think that is? Because of toxic masculinity, right? But you also have to understand that, especially within the black community, we live in a world where black men are supposed to be this. Black men can't smoke hookah anymore. Like, what is it y'all can't do? Y'all can't smoke hookah. Y'all can't wear clear nail polish. Y'all can't um, hug. That's right. Uh, black I don't, men like, can't I don't hug. like smoking hookah. Black men right. can't smile. Black men can't. Yeah. Um, I think I was in a comment on Instagram one day and it says something like black men can't say the word everything is sassy for black men now right and I think that that contributes to the narrative that I'm talking about right where women don't even realize that they are contributing to why men are DL in the first place because mm. y'all keep talking about and look, hold on why y'all mm men it starts with y'all to begin with, right? But then we contribute to that and take on that mentality and then further enable it because men are supposed to be this. And as a black man, if you're this and, and you can only be this, you have to walk the straight line. If you teeter totter on that line a little bit, then you are sassy or questionable or got sugar in your tank or this or that. And then that makes men who are like, well, dang, I don't have time to be emasculated, humiliated, embarrassed. So I like to sleep with men. I'm bisexual or I'm gay or whatever. I'm going to just do it on the low. Mm. That's interesting because, you know, it, I do believe women do like, you know, men who are attracted or, uh, or who are get attention from other women. But more importantly, they like men who are respected by men. Correct. And the reality of it is, I mean, I'm gonna be quite honest. When I do know, like, a brother is homosexual, there's like, just like with a woman, mm -hmm. I know there's a like, there's a cap on where I could take that relationship. The level of respect is at question, mm -hmm. at it's, minimum. It is at question, I, and I've had and I've had brothers like homosexual brothers that I have a ton of respect for, like that I've worked with on teams 
that it's usually life that puts me in a situation where I have to get to know them on a deeper level and I end up having, right. I can end up having a, a ton of respect for the brother. Yeah. But typically I'm not going after those relationships. So I could see how, you know, they're not going to get respect from most men in the, in the masculine community for real, for real. So I can, that, that's just, I, I really don't see that changing. And then think about how that influences women. Mm. If the man, if your homeboys don't respect you, why would I? I get a it. man that I respect don't respect you. So what am I supposed to think of you? And is that so? How is that looked at in the court? Is that look treated just as regular, just as just it's as adultery would? Divorce. It's a it's a normal adultery claim because to consider their sexuality would be discriminatory, and you know we can't do that. Right, right. That makes right. Sense. just like a lesbian divorce or a gay divorce. I don't. It's there's no such thing as gay. It's a divorce, right? Mm. Um, since the laws have changed, especially so. No, it's not considered. It would be adultery. And if a judge was to punish someone who was DL any harshly than he would a man who slept with 100 women on his wife, man. that would be a huge problem. <laughs> so they asked for a new poll, but a lot of the supporters right now, they're in the comments, they're saying, yo, we don't, they, they, they not, they not, they not accepting that. They're like, yo, we don't enable homosexual men. That's what they're saying. But 134 I, votes. Yeah, on that we one. got 134 right. votes on the guys oh, on the, oh, we got 134 votes on this thing. And I'm in this poll. Hypothetical question. You got a good man, a good husband. You find out he's gay. Are you leaving? 95% of people say absolutely. Ooh. So let me ask you firsthand. You got these women coming to you. They found out this scandal exists. They got a man. He's homosexual or bisexual, whatever kind of sexual he wants to, 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 to accept or claim. And what is their response? Like, are they disgusted? Are they just deeply hurt? Are they embarrassed? Like, what is typically going through emotionally with the these above. women? All of the above. Wow. Yeah, because you uh, most of the women that come across my desk end up saying, you know, I don't know how long it was going on. Right. When I thought he was cheating on me with a woman, he was cheating on me with a man. Mm. I don't know. You know, when he had sex with me this time, I don't know if he was thinking about me or if he was thinking about, you know what I mean? Mm. Got you. And mm. how am I going to now explain this to my children? Because my children have seen mommy and daddy and now they may mm. see daddy and stepdaddy. You know what I mean? Or whatever happens next. So it's always humiliated, right? Because women feel some type of way to know that like their man doesn't want them simply because they're them, right? And yeah. to be married and in a relationship with someone for 10 years and wake up and be like, dang, you don't want me no more. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's not like you're competing with a woman. It's not even possible. Like they literally cannot be nothing. any, yeah, anything like yeah. this other person. Yeah. And that's very hard to deal with. I could imagine that because a woman, a woman who has a good man, I mean, all she wants to do is support that man right. and help that man. So now you kind of put this thing in her face where she, she can't, can't even compete. aspire to be that. Nope. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's extremely damaging. So, I could imagine. Man, let, let, let me ask you this now, too, because as man, that was that was that was interesting. I, I knew the poll was going to go that way, though. That made, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I want to ask this, too, because as it comes to as it comes to divorce now and social media, mm -hmm. I want to talk. Do you see social media playing a big part? Huge. In divorce and now, okay. Which when you say huge, what do you mean by that? Um, well, shoot, which angle you want to take it? <laughs> so, is wow. divorce related to the reason that many of us are getting divorced, or do you think it more has a more indirect? Is it directly related, or is it more indirectly related to the reason people are in those divorce courts? So, I mean, that's the where we get into that gray irreconcilable differences area, right? right. Because social media already creates a bunch of insecurity in people mm -hmm. naturally, right? As individuals. So imagine you have partners who are on social media and have quote unquote access. And I say quote unquote because you don't really have access to these people. You just think you have access to them because you can pick your phone up, go to their profile, look at what they're doing on their story, right. look at this, look at that. So you think if I send a DM, there's a 50-50 chance she might respond. And if she does, I have access, right? And I think that that creates a lot of issues in marriages and yeah. relationships period but definitely in marriages when you don't have the tools that you need to be able to communicate and work through issues individually mm -hmm. right so on that end i would say it definitely does but like i said on the other end People are not sticking through their marriages in the way that they used to back in the day, right? right? You said your parents, what, 47? Right. Uh -huh. 47 years. I don't know that we're going to make it to 47 years with a lot of the wow. marriages that I'm seeing because- Too challenging. The, it's not too challenging. Mm. People are the same. Mm. The issues are the same. Relationships are the same. I think that we are 
evolving as people and that we're better equipped to have conversation, right? And yeah. work through issues than our parents were, right? right? Cause we go talk to the lady now, we in therapy, we do this. We emotionally do that. intelligent. We're emotionally intelligent. <laughs> we got all these Buzz resources and, and books and all this stuff that should help us work through relationships. But the issue is you think that everything is intolerable. Right. Mm. I ain't got to deal with this because it's another one around the corner, period. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If one come, one leaving, one coming the next day. Like, that's the part that makes it hard for people to stick through things. Yeah. Marriage is not a fairy tale. Your wedding is not an adult prom. Most of y'all want to have an adult prom. Okay? That's really just, they just want to get married, have a big that's thing. A I want to be the center of yeah. attention yeah. and look beautiful. But they don't understand that after all of that is over, in five years, you may not like who your spouse is. Right. Wow. Real quick, shout out to Wifey, W-I-F-E. And I think this is just a comment. How good of a man or woman are you if you're willfully choosing to be deceitful? You know what? I agree with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually looking for moderators. We actually going to turn this up and get some group moderators soon. So W-I-F-E, Wifey, you are on the top of my list. So Facts. shout out to you. Facts. Now, Rob, I want to ask yeah. you because... This is, I think Brittany is bringing on some really uh, great points here. And uh, my, my question for you, when it came to social media, like what was your, in your relationships, what was your general rules? Or like, what are some things that you might have considered disrespectful that you yeah. found women to, to casually do? Um, you know, social media didn't have a heavy impact on, on my marriages. Um, the first one, of course, social media it wasn't even cracking like that. Um, but I would say uh, in my last experience, social media didn't play a huge part because I was very unaware of, of what was going on um, until, you know, towards the end of it. So, you know, if, if I knew or if I was a little bit more aware of social media, meaning, um, you know, because I didn't want to be a micromanager and that wasn't my thing. But at the same time, I didn't realize that it was a tool for people to reconnect. So I think that that would be the biggest thing is just really not being naive on the possibilities and what could be going on. And uh, again, I didn't want to micromanage, but damn, if, if, if buddy that was in high school is, is, is always up under her pitches and, and smiley faces and hearts and then things like that, or, or, you know, of course, what some people would do now is, go to the other person and see what type of comments and things. Now, if I saw the, or if I knew and realized what the, the kitty with the hard eyes meant, <laughs> <laughs> then, <laughs> then, you know, that'd be a whole different story, uh, but it, it does play a part as far as, you know, really just the respect level, you know, because social media is that like you could either show off, uh, you know, your fam, you know, your significant other, or you can be very elusive and, and pretend to be, you know, what they call it online single, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but it didn't play, it didn't play a part at all. Um, but you know, where I'm at now though, it, it would play a part. Yeah. Uh, it would it, a huge part, especially when it came, uh, to, uh, securities of, you know, if, if you're going to be my lady, you know, this is what comes with it because I do have a platform and that platform has a higher percentage of women that support, uh, you know, the products and, and uh, the platform that I have. So she would have to she'd have to know that that's what comes with it. Oh, trust me. We know. <laughs> yeah, we see, we see Rob's on IG, so we know it's man gravy all over that thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But um... I want to I want to ask this. I want to. Well, actually not ask, but. Matter of fact, go, go ahead, because I was going to transition us. No, no, take us there. Take us there. I like I because I want to actually talk about, uh, go into a little bit further what you were speaking on, with people not necessarily having that resilience. The funny thing is, it was so, just these past few episodes, y'all got to go watch if y'all have not, the previous episodes we did on divorce, part one, would you stay or leave this relationship, and part two with the men and the women, because the philosophy between the men and the women, the difference in divorce was just so clear and it actually bothered me mm. a bit when I thought about that because I get if you divorce and your philosophy is we ain't leave, look we not leaving from the beginning but somehow things happen and we get into we we, j we reluctantly have this divorce cool but if I know already going into it you already have divorce 
clearly is an option. If this happens, I leave. Yeah. If this happens, I leave. That really makes me reluctant. It's almost like a business partner who's already telling me, yo, Ty, listen, I'm getting I'm gonna I'm get in the business with you and build it. But listen, if I got to dip into my savings, I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. But Ty, right. realistically, that's what relationships are. When you have well, something that my therapist told me, shout out to her, Rochelle Kennedy. Um, something that my therapist always told me is you have to look at your relationships, marriage, or um, you know, not single, but just a regular relationship as a business partnership, yeah. right? Would you invest? in this business based on what's going on right now yeah. can you trust your partner do they have integrity are they investing the same amount of money money being time effort energy Resources. into the business as you are right? right that's literally what a marriage and a relationship is supposed to be like yeah so realistically people are going to be upset with me when i say this marriage is a contract that is it a lot of people want to be married and think they want to be married when they really just want a committed relationship. Yeah. Mm. You can have all the part. Whenever I ask people, why do you want to get married? Oh, I want someone to be loving and considerate and consistent and trusting and hold me at night. And be da -da 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 -da. it's never anything about the actual contractual benefits of being yeah. married. Right. I want something that's recognized by God. OK, cool. But there are atheists who get married. They're not ordained by God. Right. You know what I mean? So it's it's an actual contract. And when you breach a contract, there are consequences to that. But so see, it's not ooh. smart to go into business with someone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, you know, may be a bad investment. Exactly. Yeah. So if a woman clearly tells me and this, this was the conversation. If a woman is already showing signs, like if her philosophy is not anti-divorce from the get-go, I promise you, I'm not marrying that woman. I understand. Like yeah. it, it clearly is showing me, I don't even want to get into business with somebody if they not the, their attitude is not by any means, we going to make this shit pop. Right. Yeah. Like that's the kind of people I like to rock with. But you with. have to understand the position that, like I said, women are in. We are unequal. Right. Mm. The relationship going in is already unequal. You have the upper hand always simply because you are a man, period. I'm sorry, ladies. Where the camera? I'm sorry. Yeah, talk to him. <laughs> talk to him. I am sorry. I am a woman. I am a boss. I am a mom. I'm popping. I get it. I'm beautiful. But I understand the world that we live in. Unfortunately, it has not transitioned completely. We are still here when it comes to men. They walk into a room, they command a different presence than we do. They can talk a different talk than we do. They can use a different tone. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Them yeah. kids come home and they screaming and you've been yelling and hollering. And the man come home, he ain't did nothing. Hey, sit up. And the mm -hmm. kids scatter, right? That's, right? That's just the difference in the relationship. Yeah. So I understand when women say, I have to stand up and advocate for myself because if I don't have a non-negotiable, you are always going to have the upper hand on me. And then what do I do? Now, this is the transition. Because I say that to say, I think that directly leads to why women are the first people and the highest people initiating Correct. divorce right. in these relationships. And I think that's making men very reluctant who men seem to be, I'm not saying they're the better partners in the relationship, no. but they are the partners that do seem to want to stick it out and stay in the relationship and probably have a higher tolerance for shit that goes down but there's more benefit for you during the marriage there's more benefit for her during the divorce right. so why get married she married you because she loves you she wants to be a devoted wife to you she wants to invest in your business but if you are not providing her with what she was supposed to get out of her investment that's not good because you clearly just said back in the day uh -huh. we were sticking it out Right, so but listen, back in the, the but problems on, but, didn't but change. Grandma was sticking it out through side babies and stuff like that. Now, Grandma was sticking yeah, it out. No her ass. But here's the Come thing, on. though: Are you saying so? Are you saying one thing for sure is that shit's gonna come up in a relationship that's not gonna be good, right? Like that's is, that's guaranteed. So should okay. they? Should we just be leaving as but, these things but are coming remember, up? Remember, I said irreconcilable differences is that gray space, right? That's that. We're not communicating well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We're growing apart. That's why we breaking up, though. Right, right. But that's not the only reason, though, Tashaan. It's men that's out here that are literal abusers, physically, financially, right. you know, <clears throat> emotionally, verbally, right? They don't help. They don't right. help. It's women that bust. That, and hold on. Let's talk about these 50 50 brothers. They are, they up here. How many people we got? <laughs> you want to go there now? Because yeah, when, I, when we talk about these new marriages, 
where the women are paying half of the bills. Right. They work as many hours as y'all do. Yep. But they're still expected to be women in that house. They so are. So they got to cook and clean, fold laundry, take care of your kids. Everything else in between. Do homework, suck your dick when you go, before you go to sleep. And then you, she got to pay her half of the Amex <laughs> and, and the rent. I get it. And the no, I get it. Right. So I, you also have to understand that contributes to it too. So when a woman is saying, I need help, right? I, I don't want to, if I got to go work and I got to do this so that we can survive, you need to help me in this house. And men, because that, right? Women are supposed to do this. I'm a man. I get it. I'm a man. I'm supposed yeah. to, I come home and what did that? What? No, women not going for that no more. Is that the biggest reason though? Is that the biggest reason? Move those the, to the side. So move the neglecting, uh-huh. move the, the the super bad neglecting men to the side. We talked about irreconcilable differences yes. is one of the top reasons. Yes. It's one of the reasons that people cite when they can't point to what the actual issue is. It's not adultery. It's not cruel treatment. They're not it's getting beat I feel up. Like it's not, it. No, 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 no. It's not a, it's not a major event. Correct. in the relationship it's a, but it's a culmination correct. of many factors mm-hmm. and it's like rather than try to identify the one because the therapy didn't help us with that correct yeah. just fuck it right. that's the situation basically yeah I, and, and, and i and i get how somebody can get there i want to i want to uh ask you a question though i got hella questions hella questions but real quick i just want to talk about this record we just broke 55 minutes in over 530 Let's people Let's in go. the chat Let's get so it. clearly We've been having an impact because the lives, I mean, I just can't wait till we get to 1,000. I can't wait till we get to 1,500, 2,000. So shout out to the members. But this is what I want to do. I want Tyshawn actually pick it up from here because I thought about this. What I want to do, because we just hit over 500 in the chat, I want to open up for questions from members only. So while we're having this good conversation, while Rob is spinning game, while Brittany is spinning game, while Ty is facilitating a very, very good conversation, by the way, good job. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> While he is doing that, I'm going to take you guys' questions. So go ahead and throw them in the chat. I'm going to tally them up, and we're going to get some your specific questions answered. So go ahead. If we – because I get that you're saying that there's men who's not holding down their responsibility. Correct. I have seen those men. Yeah. Those men are disgusting. Just be clear. We don't hear – we're not one of these platforms telling men to not be shit in these marriages. Mm-hmm. Like, I am actually – a product of a, a, a not shit man who did not raise my ass and shout out to my step pops who stepped in. Yeah. But see, the thing about it is still, I still understand that it's like our tolerance level for shit has dropped. It has. And I can't yeah. say that we talk about seven out of 10 women are initiating divorce. I can't say every single one of those women are initiating divorce because they're getting abused because they men are just treating them all so bad. It's literally because a lot of these divorces are just happening because it's a lot of I don't feel like it. I don't I'm not happy. I don't like what's going on right now. I think you're giving your brothers a lot of credit that they don't need. No, but, but, but here's the thing, Brittany, you literally are going against what you said at the How beginning so? of the conversation. You said it was a, a gray area yes. that we are not addressing, that it's really not even a good excuse for. But that's not the it. majority. That's not your that's you, not you said the majority, majority was no, you said the majority no, no, no. I was adultery. Majority is adultery and irreconcilable differences and I said irreconcilable area. differences is a gray area and it's a culmination All of right. a number of different factors that culmination of a number of different factors includes abuse financial abuse verbal abuse being not being yeah. shit not being considerate not being this so fuck it right that's what I was saying but I am acknowledging what you are saying there is also this issue of everyone thinking I can just get another one and a lot of issues that could potentially be worked out. Everyone or women? Because it's seven out of 10 women leaving. Women. Okay. Women. I can just get another one. Or I could just do something else. Or I would just rather not be bothered. And I think that there's not enough work done there. Thank you. <laughs> no, you see it getting it? Yeah, yeah, Did it get in there? Yeah. I think that there's not enough work being put into that space in that area where we're saying, okay, what is my spouse doing that I don't like? Right. He doesn't know how to communicate, right? And I don't like that he doesn't know how to communicate. He's not romantic enough. Mm -hmm. And I don't like that he's not romantic enough. He's not considerate enough. And I don't like that he's not considerate enough. Those are issues that can be worked out and that can be addressed. You don't have to leave your marriage because your spouse isn't the romantic guy. He wasn't romantic when y'all was dating. You knew that. And marriage doesn't change a man. It amplifies whatever he's got going on at the time, right? So... 
if you can't be with your spouse on the day that you get married and, and, and he be that way 10 years from now, you probably shouldn't marry him because there's a chance it may not change. I would right? agree with that. And I think that that's the part where I'm saying people come and sit down. And when I ask them if they can't cite all the reasons that Ryan and I are talking about and they're just like, uh, uh that to me is ridiculous because it's like, OK, why did you get married in the first place? Yeah. Right. And then. What is contributing to you thinking that you just about to leave and go find another one and he going to marry you and you it's going to be what you want because it's not going to be what you want because yeah. everybody has the same mentality. I could just get another one and everybody, everybody's jumping from relationship to relationship or marriage to marriage. That's right. Y'all all running in the same circle anyway. It's the same and nobody's doing the work internally to of starting fresh. So, that was, so, so that's going. the problem. It's like it's the same shit. Like literally, you're leaving one relationship. It's gonna be the same set of problems, the same amount of work you're gonna have to put in, Correct. the same headaches, Correct. The same, all know. the same thing. But you again, you thinking it's gonna be better. And I'm not saying it's some problems that just kind of come with dealing with a guy. Correct. I'm, that's just the reality of the situation, ladies. You want yeah. a man in your life? It's some problem. You want to have kids? It's some problems that come with kids. No, no, listen. If you want to have a woman, fellas, <laughs> it's some problems that come with women. But what I'm saying is, at the alarmingly high rates mm -hmm. that this is happening. It's not because everybody's getting their ass whooped and it's not it's not problems that we sh we can't recover from and we shouldn't be trying to put the work in to recover from for the greater good of building a family and a legacy. And we literally have people at the table regularly talking about the shit that they regularly go. No, through. no, let's listen. Two things can be true. Correct. So you can still have some people giving up on a relationship, but then you can also have people who attempted women specifically who attempted to bring some cure some level of cure to the relationship but yeah. haven't able been able to be successful exactly. yeah. now the women that we're speaking to because I'm, I'm speaking to people that support the channel and these women are communicating that they're doing everything they can mm -hmm. to try to get their husband some help or try to bring the relationship help mm -hmm. now don't get me wrong i think both parties in the relationship are responsible for taking care of themselves and getting their own help so it's not hey it's not always let's go to counseling together it's just hey probably you should go to counseling and lead by example but i do think at the end of the day a man is is accountable because it kind of because this thing a man I, and i do agree with you men and women are not equal in that way mm -hmm. so if a man is leading the household and he's providing a, these the sample the the actual leading by example with the kids the wife then at the end of the day the man should be the person to step up and initiate hey we need to get this fixed now if i'm a teammate or i'm an employee and i'm working at my job right mm -hmm. and they not paying me and I'm telling them, hey, I need to be paid. If I'm on my job and saying, hey, I'm confused about what I'm doing and they still not providing me no level of structure. If I'm requesting all of these things consistently, now don't get me wrong, the job can say, well, hey, can you work on some skills on your own? Hey, can you try to figure some things out? That's fine. But at the end of the day, if my leadership and the person that I'm should to, to lean on is not initiating us getting these things resolved, I don't think there's nothing wrong with if things hit the fan, it's just like, yo, like I'm done because clearly you're not leading us in a direction of resolution. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I really just didn't want to, I wanted to put that out there because I don't always think no, I mean, it's people I, I, not I, I being willing it. to I get it. But things. again, uh, what we typically do, we go to the, we go to the ain't shit dude. Right. We go to the ain't shit worst case this scenario dude. Not ain't shit but dude. No, but no, that, that, no, that, no, that, that, that is, is that the is majority. You don't have to be ain't shit to 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 not commit to what to, to that you is do. ain't shit that's not if you shit. neglect because, no, if no, you because neglect your relationship makes that, mistakes. That's, everybody no, makes no, no, mistakes no 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 but, but but that still ain't shit if i neglect my people in my company i'm still being an ain't shit leader no but this that's is what still I, this, ain't shit this, this is what i'm saying just because a man experienced a time where he's not delivering doesn't he's, mean he's has he ever delivered shit. has he ever delivered or well, assuming he has delivered no, at no, some no, no, point. no 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 those women they've never had a man deliver bro those women have never had a man deliver. Wait, wait, wait. What are we talking about? Sandra? Women who are in a situation uh -huh. where they upset with that man. Mm -hmm. Typically, that man was the same since he was day that's one. Not true. But that's, that's not true. true. That's not true. That's not true. No, no, no. It's not true. Most bro, cases. Bro, no, no, no. We, no, 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 no. we know men who are at one level of success, and then when they get to another level of success, they the maintenance drop. Change. The, the, the what you mean rich change. like he gets rich that could happen most men ain't rich we not, that's but, not the but situation we don't have to talk about it, rich. it, it, it could be it many be changes from in situations thousand dollars a year to two hundred thousand exactly, dollars a year exactly. two hundred thousand dollars is not rich you're not like it's hey. not the money <laughs> tashine tashine no, 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 let me tell you something hold on hold on hold on life changes in general 
it's a lot of men that's out here getting paper. Like let's no, not I most get men. It. That. It's less than one percent. But but listen not, to it's what not I'm a saying. lot of guys make. Most guys are poor. But listen to what I'm saying, Tashawn. I think the problem with the verbiage and what we're sticking to with you is you're saying that most divorces are this. I'm, I can tell you that all of my cases, there's a problem. No, there. no, no, no. I didn't say no, no, no. Don't get me wrong. I didn't say most divorces are this. What I'm saying is that at the weight and rate we're getting divorced, uh -huh. there should be more families sticking in and fighting for it. I'm not saying that. Yes, I'm not saying that all of these relationships should be making it and not getting divorced. Okay. But because I do think divorce should definitely happen, and there's no way you can make you can make peace. But I think we're a weaker culture. I think where our tolerance levels are a lot lower to deal with basic shit that comes with a family. I agree with that, mm -hmm. but I will say mm -hmm. that by the time that, I, and, and here's the thing, a lot of my women that come to me for adultery cases, abuse cases, they not, they not leaving on the first incident. So all these women like, uh, 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 no, no, they're not. Their husband has been cheating for years. And I think I get that. Yeah. I mean, that's the reality of it. But but I want to go somewhere that we haven't went. If we're talking about um, the divorce rate being in the 60s, uh, women filing 70 uh, percent of those cases. A lot of times, you know, for me, I don't necessarily talk about the reasons for divorce. I mean, I think infidelity is a result of something else. Right. It, it, something else happened. There was a breakdown and that person lost trust in that person. So they're they're looking for something. The 80 20 rule. They're looking for 20 percent in somebody else. But more importantly than that, I'm looking at the foundation of why you got married. If you start, if th this is a stat that will probably never uh, because people are not going to keep it 100. Why did you marry that person? Did you marry that person because she got pregnant and the daddy threatened your life? Did, did you marry them because uh, trauma bonds, right? You let both of you left relationships to, to be in a relationship. These are stats and statistics that, that you'll never get because who's going to be that transparent? And so even when you get into that, that's going to be your foundation. So if you got married because of a trauma bond, it has an expiration date. Because that's your mentality. Your mentality is this person is no longer meeting my needs from a spiritual, financial, physical. Uh, so I'm going to find something outside, even if it starts out as a friend at the job that you can talk to that understands. Even if it talks, to, even if it turns out to be somebody that you met on social media that you thought was cool and they're easy to talk to. One thing that I will say is the most under protected person is a married woman. I'm going to break that down for you and I'm going to repeat it. The most unprotected person is the married woman. Number one, who is her rock? Who is her partner? Her husband, right? So if her and her husband are having an issue and then their separation in that relationship, she may not want to talk to her girls, right? She's embarrassed. She may not want to talk to her sisters or siblings because they're not going to give her sound advice because they may be hating on you anyway. So who she who is she going to talk to and who is it easiest to talk to and tell the truth and tell your story to a stranger, mm. a stranger. So that's how the DMs come. And that's how the the conversation goes from, hey, you know how you doing? Um, I see that you don't post your family anymore. You know what's going on? Uh, let's talk about it. Do you want to talk about it? And that comes, that starts out as, I guess, uh, what people would say, innocent DM to, hey, you deserve better. Hey, let me do something for you. Like, this is a shit that nobody wants to talk about. And they're probably not going to tell Brittany either. They're not going to tell her about that conversation <laughs> because it can't be proved. But that is one of the reasons why I just feel like people aren't focused on why they got married because that's going to be your foundation. If, if your foundation is, you know what? We met each other. We decided we wanted to build. We built a friendship. That friendship turned into 
you know, something that was bigger than us. And it only made sense for us to get married because our mindset is once we get married, we're building on our foundation and it's only going to grow to anniversaries, to my life partner, to my forever. Yeah. Is that what you're looking for? So like, cause I know you had ventured off and, you know, started actually having relationships with other women in your, was it your first marriage or did yeah. it happen in both? No, it happened in both. Okay. So at that point, is that why you started having those other relationships? Because you were getting your needs fulfilled that weren't, you know, being fulfilled in that first one? Um, well, I, I will say um, I was much younger. So my mindset was, okay, I got her. I ain't really got to do too much else, mm. you know? Um, and on top of that, I had to be real with myself. Was I really ready to be a husband and what comes with that? Mm -hmm. As we talked about leadership before, Leadership is, is more than just making enough money to cover the bills and giving a, giving a wife a couple of dollars so she can go shopping right. because I did that. Right. So leadership also has to be about legacy. Leadership has to be about me personally developing and growing as a man so I can be a better husband, so I can be a better father. I wasn't interested in that at the time. I was very selfish. So, um, you know, for me, it was like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm handling this over here. So I deserve to have some recreational time. And I believe that's what a, a lot of men decide to do versus personally grow and develop. Because if you do that and you're focused on your purpose, then that means you need to make sure that your wife and your family is growing as well. And you guys are on the same page. Rob, I think it's dope that you said that you had to learn to be a better husband, right? Because um, I, I saw something on the internet not long ago that said a lot of men want wives but don't want to be husbands, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. like I said, marriage benefit is beneficial to men during the actual marriage during, itself. Yeah. But I think, unfortunately, a lot of men are not taught, especially black men, right, are not taught how to be husbands, right? right. It's not modeled for them. Right. So That's they true. know, oh, if I get married, I'll have a wife. It'll come with this benefit because she's supposed to do this, 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 and this. And as long as I pay the bills, I'm good. Or unless you're 50 50, as long as I do whatever, <laughs> whatever, I'm good. But they don't understand the role that actually comes with being a husband. And if that's a spiritual role for you or whatever that may be, I think a lot of men aren't prepared for that. Right. And the key um, to marriage, which is a business, uh, and, and what would help us as black men, as men, is to have a mentor and a support system outside of the family. You have to have a mentor and support system because your daddy going to be like, look, she'll come around. You just keep drilling. Her. You just keep buying the purses. You, you know, you just keep doing that. But a mentor will, will hold you accountable of what are you doing? What are you actually doing on a regular basis, on a daily basis? What are your goals? How are you showing that you are a leader? And uh, people, people get mixed up with leader and head of household because head of household is, is figurative. I'm the head of the household, meaning I'm, I'm the one, right? But when you start talking about leadership, then you have to incorporate your family. You have to incorporate your wife because she has an input. She she sees things that you your punk ass will never see, mm -hmm. right? She deals with some things that won't even make it to you because she took care of it, mm -hmm. right? And she will also figure some things out when you decide that you don't want to get help, right? She'll figure it out. You say, okay, I'm a fix the sink, I'm going to work on it, whatever. Hell, that wife will, if you take long enough, she will, what do you call it, DIY? DIY. She'll fix, she, DIY, do it yeah. yourself, right? Yeah. DIY. She'll she'll do it. And she might tell you that she went and got somebody, hired somebody just to save your ego. She better not hire me. <laughs> <laughs> Some work going to get done. I'm, I'm curious, though. Oh, I want to <laughs> talk about this real quick. Maintenance man. Because, you know, <laughs> maintenance man. No, so, so me, I, I consider myself very traditional, right? So I want me a traditional woman. Now, my ideal scenario for my woman, if she's going to work, if she just really, really wants to work, she's going to work for the family business. Otherwise, she's going to do something, whatever her passion is, three to four hours a day, maximum. Yeah. And if she wants to change every week, then by all means, I, I am working on the, capac uh, the capacity to be able to have her do that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, it's other men who are like, no, 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 no. That's not happening. Right. Yeah. I want you to do both. I want you to work, bring home this bacon, so to speak, and then also come back home and do double duty. Right. So what do you like in, in terms of the people that come to you? Are those 50-50 marriages, are they 
more or less successful than a traditional uh, situation? It's about the same. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think my 50-50 marriages, the reasoning is very different sometimes. And sometimes it's the same. It's just the audacity is, yeah. is plentiful. Um, but I think it, it's because I'm thinking of some of my like most recent cases, right, that have walked through my door. And one is a marriage where it's a stay at home and her husband's cheating. And the other is a 50-50 that I just wrapped up. Right. And he was also cheating. So, like I said, the audacity is plentiful. <laughs> so, I mean, it's it's really the same. So I want to ask you this is because you with marriage being that it truly is a contract. Yeah. And because it's a contract, you got to we don't even first of all, I don't even know what's in the contract, what's on the contract. Mm -hmm. And as it relates to the conversation of prenups, prenup is like. Uh, would you say like an addendum to the contract itself? Like um, a prenuptial agreement is kind of like insurance. I always say prenups are divorce insurance. I'm trademarking that, so don't take it. Um, <laughs> Speak louder for me. Uh, prenups are divorce insurance. Okay. Yeah. Right. So I, I think it it helps you in the event that you need to plan for a divorce, and that's completely okay. Just because you have a prenup, ladies, just because he asked you to sign one does not mean he doesn't love you. It doesn't mean anything. It's just like someone calling you telling you you need car insurance because you might get into a car accident, right? So it's the same thing. There's a chance if you enter into a contractual relationship with your spouse to be married that that contract may be broken and you may have to get a divorce. That's just a chance. I think having a prenup drafted outlines what you want to happen in the event that a divorce occurs. So for my dependent spouses, I'm talking to my stay-at-homes, right? Whether you're a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home dad, you need a prenup that has an infidelity clause, unless you're in the state of California because lifestyle clauses are not recognized there. But oh. if you live in Georgia, you need an infidelity clause. If you know you're not going to work throughout your marriage or you're going to take 10 years off or you're going to stay at home with the kids while he goes to medical school or, you know, this, this, this and that, then you need an infidelity clause that says if he cheats on you, that you get X amount of dollars in alimony. Wow. So, she gave me y'all up, ladies. <laughs> that's, so you saying a, a prenup could be good for good or it is good for both men and it women. It can be good for both men and women. Yes. Okay. So, I, so, I like and that. it's not and it's not because a lot of times we think it's for people with a bunch of assets, it's people who are rich. No. So, so what are some common, like that even the everyday person, what are some common, in, common, uh, pr what is it? Is it prenups? Yeah. Okay. That they should be looking to get for their marriage. So I think one thing that people don't really take a, into a consideration during a divorce is debt. You are also dividing your marital debt. Yeah. Right. Mm. And marital debt can be in your name solely. Mm. Or it can be in both of our names. It doesn't have to be a joint credit card for it to be considered marital debt. It can be a credit card that I got during the marriage and used and ran up on both of us, right? Yeah. If I'm using this credit card for groceries and household bills and things like that, just because the Amex is in my name don't mean it ain't a part of your debt. Well, wait, so so if somebody else got a, so if we marry and my wife get a credit card uh -huh. and she goes to town on it, I could potentially be responsible for that if I were to find out about that. Depending on what the to town is, is spent on. Now, if she's just at the <laughs> okay. Chanel store buying herself stuff, yeah. then no, that's her debt. But so if people... she's at the Chanel store buying you some stuff too, it don't matter that it's just on, on her social. <laughs> it's, it's marital. Do mm. people come to you for financial infidelity? Yes. Okay, they just find out like like what's the well, like what what do you, what is defined as financial infidelity? And give me an example of a situation. So, um, spouses taking money, hiding it, spouses, I don't want to say work, because I actually had a case, it's over now, so I can talk about it, where a spouse was working a completely different job, and <laughs> <laughs> he, he was working two jobs, and she had no idea, and he was stashing this money in this savings account, and it was like over $150,000 in that one account. What and was the like, plan? That's crazy. And that's what I'm trying to he figure out. And she, and she was like, oh, he's trying to leave, like, does he have another family? What was he trying yeah. to do? And when she figured that out, she came to my office and was like, sis, we got, we, I got to get up out of here because it's no telling what else he's been doing. He was working a second job and she had no idea. But stuff like that, I, I, I you know, because 
<laughs> I want to get married. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I aspire to have a huge family, you know, wife and everything. But uh, the prenup is seeming like a good option. I think yeah. we, we spoke last time and y'all got to watch the first interview we did with the breakup lawyer, Brittany. But you that's the first point I really start considering the prenup in the future. Yeah. I want to drop this poll real quick because I am curious what the audience thinks. 106 votes so far, but I want to try to get at least 200 votes on this poll, specifically because we got over 630 wow. people, record. which is a record. So I want y'all to answer this poll. Would you sign a prenup? So far, we got 113 votes. We had 78%. Yes, but let's get 200 votes on this. And real quick, I want to shout out to Benita Jackson. Welcome to the family. We hey, love welcome, you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. for supporting the channel, yes. guys. I'm going to drop that link right now. Join the membership, guys. We're giving you value twice a week, five times a week, five, dropping five videos a week, including two lives every Monday and Wednesday. Join the channel because the channel members, I told you this, guys, are going to dictate who comes on the show, what type of content we put out, what type of we, we, events we do, and anything we do in the future. Facts. It's all going to be dictated by the people who support the channel the most. So check, so check, uh, make sure you click that link and join the membership. That's good. Uh, Brittany, I got to ask you this. Um, what happens when uh, you have a couple and both of them are um, employed and the wife has a stash, right? She has a stash or better yet, um, doesn't make a difference if she's employed or not. And she has a stash. She's taking the money that the husband has given her. Mm -hmm. um, she is, you know, kind of just kind of squeezing some stuff out of the account to do other things. Mm -hmm. What what happens and have you dealt with that where the woman has saved enough money to get ghosts? Of course. It depends on if his lawyer is good enough to find it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So it's uh, sometimes when it comes down to the process, you got to be able to search for some accounts and you got to go through oh, all of that's, that's what you pay a lawyer for. Wow. Oh, so to do the, uh, in, what is it, what is that called? Like forensics, the accounting you forensics? You can get a forensic accountant, yes. To check all accounts, just to make sure he wasn't doing nothing funny. Correct. So so I want to ask this too, because you know, there's like a general consensus uh -huh. going around in the culture that men just they just get dragged through the court process when they go to when they go to court. <laughs> like they say that they actually say the court, child custody, divorce, they say all of those just generally favor the women. Okay. Is that true? Um, it depends on the county that you're in, especially in here in the state of Georgia. Yeah. You have some of your rural counties that are more traditional, right? And they believe in traditional marriage and the man brings home the bacon and the woman is at home working and they will punish you if you cheat on that woman and she's been taking care of your kids for 25 years. Right. Wow. Yeah. And then you have more progressive counties like Fulson, which is a county I primarily practice in. And our judges are in their 30s like us. Right. And yeah. or in their early 40s. And mm -hmm. they understand how the culture has shifted and how relationships have shifted. And they believe that dads can be equal parents to moms and they might give a dad 50, 50 custody of those kids or give custody to dad. If they think that mom is a piece of shit. Right. That's very interesting. So the culture, the current state of things affects the judges presiding the way the judges preside. Well, you have to remember that judges are appointed and elected. Yeah. So if I ran for judge one day, right. And I was on the bench Imagine how different I would be as a judge compared to a woman who was a judge 20 years ago. Wow. That makes right? sense. My That's outlook true. is that completely different. So yeah. as we are getting older, right, we're the new adults. I can't believe it. But <laughs> as we are getting older, we're now transitioning into those positions and the world is changing, which means that your judges are changing, your politicians are changing, yeah. your laws are changing because the, the mindset is changing. So and it's a good thing. In some certain circumstances, and it's a bad thing in others. Yeah. So those progressive, those progressive counties, counties, mm -hmm. and these progressive judges, they're more likely to give a father, you say, in custody of the kids, and so on and so forth. Do you think that's wrong? Like, is it is is that something that like is that a good aspect of it being progressive that the men are now able to get custody, or you think that's actually you know something? Um, that potentially, you go I have to? A, I have a girlfriend who practices in Florida. Her name is Sarah Singer. And um, she told me very recently that in Florida, the standard is 50-50 now. And you have to show why both parents should not have joint custody. 
right? So here in Georgia, it's not necessarily the standard. Like there are some judges that I know start at 50-50 and go back, but it's not an actual legal standard. In Florida, it's now the legal standard that 50-50, everyone is presumed equal as parents. We're going to have a joint physical custody schedule and you're going to have to show me why dad should not be awarded 50-50 or why mom should not be awarded 50-50. And I think that that can be a bad thing, right? Mm. Because of that inequity, in relationships. Yeah. If you've got a dad that's not present, he doesn't really know how, to, he don't know what size shoes the kids wear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He ain't yeah. never been to the school. He, you know, doesn't know anything about what they like to eat. What are they allergic to? Hasn't been to a doctor's appointment. And he got 50, 50 from the court automatically. That can be problematic. And it's a hard transition for the kids. Yeah. Because the standard that the court uses is supposed to be the best interest of the child. So if you have an absent father, because fathers can be absent even in marriages, right? Mm-hmm. That the court says, well, he's automatically going to get this. That's a hard thing for a child to adjust to. Man, it's, you know, it's interesting because, well, I think I actually kind of like that joint. Because in my because in my mind, when I when I think about it, first of all, if he's an absent father, it should be an easy case to prove that he's absent. Correct. Yeah. So like he should be able to really clearly lose that. Correct. But it kind of I like the fact that you have the opportunity to have a to 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 fight for your child on more of an even footing. Mm-hmm. Um, because I personally know about just three men that I, I know are really great men off the top of my head that had to fight like hell right. for their kids, and they wasn't. Um Two of them were not able to be successful. One of them was. Mm -hmm. And he even talked about how like during that period that even really like almost destroyed his business because like it took him so far out of. And I think he was going non-attorney as well. No, 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 no. He got an attorney late in the process, (laughs) but he he finally got it together and got one. But it it took so much out of him. Yes. Uh, Really. Please. Y'all y'all going through these processes. Y'all better. Y'all better get y'all a Brittany on your side. So y'all can go about making sure y'all able to get get that going. Yeah, and if you're in Atlanta, I'm going to go ahead and drop the consultation link because this thing, we don't promote divorces whatsoever. Like, we are firmly saying, stick it out, do everything you can. But I do think some people generally want to figure out kind of what their options are. And I'm curious, like, do you think that, because I know people come to you when they want to get a divorce, Mm -hmm. but do you even think that a divorce attorney or a consultation with a divorce attorney could benefit pre-marriage like should you go see a divorce attorney pre-marriage to see kind of what divorce would really look like you need to go to a counselor pre-marriage yeah i think that you need to all couples i always say i do this in my relationships have you been to counseling have you talked to the lady no you need to go Mm. Right. Before problems start, go ahead and have the conversations and get the tools that you'll need because you're going to need them. Relationships are relationships. We're going to go through rough patches. We're going to need to know how to communicate through um, conflict Mm -hmm. and therapy can help that. So I always tell my couples premarital counseling is a thing, but like really you need to be before you're married or engaged or anything. Y'all should have been through some sort of couples therapy yeah. already to make sure that you're ready for that. See, I, I mean, I do agree with you, but you, you talked about Rob, it being the business. Yeah. So shouldn't I get, isn't a divorce attorney technically like a business consultation? I mean, or like who could I consult to, so I can know the business that I'm getting into is what I'm asking. It depends on what you're trying to do. Right. So if you're trying to say, Hey, if we get divorced, what does that look like? And let me make myself knowledgeable. I don't think you should do that together. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think if you come to me independently so I can advise you, okay, that's gotcha. smart. Gotcha. But to sit down and do it with your spouse, I think that's just a little, <laughs> right. a little that, tacky. Wouldn't even, that wouldn't even go well. <laughs> right. That's yeah. a little tacky. Right. But, but, but to as your, an individual, though, but to as your an individual, point, that might be since, a good idea. Since marriage is a business, you should have a business plan. Right. And so I think that's where the marriage, uh, the, the counseling, like, you guys, this is your life now. This is potentially what your life will look like together. And these are some of the challenge you may have. And these are some of the suggestions that you can work on to make sure that you're a good fit. And that goes back to what I was saying is a lot of people focus on the divorce. But if you focus on why am I marrying this person? Mm-hmm. Am I marrying this woman because I got her pregnant and she she ain't taking the plan B? Like if you marry her, what, what would that look like in three in three months? 
what would that look like if if she gets pregnant again? Do you want me to take another Plan B, Mamba? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a Plan uh, Plan a hell B. Of a reason I never heard B. that one. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you know, I I just think that if you do the work on the front end, then it it will be a lot more uh, feasible, realistic on on the back end, even when it comes to to uh, finances, like you want to take a trip to France or something like that, but you haven't been to marriage counseling. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not willing to spend that because you think that you don't need that or, or the, uh, the facilitators that you have access to, you think that they're good enough. I tried to throw that in there with, without saying it. Mm. The facilitators, <laughs> you think that's yeah. good enough. That's not good enough at all. You, at all. So you, you need people that that's all that they do is they deal with premarital counseling, uh, marriage counseling, and that's what I would consider your business plan or your customized blueprint to your marriage. So I, I got that. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll real quick because we got over 223 votes. Would you, would you specifically sign the prenup? 81% out of over 200 people. This is the biggest poll we've ever had. Yeah. Over 200 people. 81% of people says, absolutely, I would sign a prenup. So I'm going to go ahead and end that. And, uh, I know I y'all talk about too, I know y'all talk about marriage counseling, but I strongly suggest that if you I, I this is what I'm gonna do. Before I get married, I'm gonna make sure I know exactly what I'm getting into. And I actually think it's smart for men, especially because of the way the courts work, to actually go and see what it looks like on the other end. So you can see the risk. I'm not saying that you shouldn't get married because like I, I told y'all where I stand on that. But I do think it's important to see in worst case scenario, yeah. what could you could potentially be responsible for? Because yeah. those things change based on where you're located. Yeah. So but, if I'm going to get married and even live in the place, I would think I would, you know, just like you say, you want to move to Florida or to Texas because there's no state income tax. <laughs> well, if I'm looking to marry and I'm looking to start my family and I'm looking to be in the place... I'm thinking I would probably want to be in a place where the laws are what I would consider fair. I agree. Yeah. So, but does don't do it with your spouse. That's that. Right. I, yeah. do, I, do that. I do understand that. Yo, so check this out. I want to since we all talking about prepping and you know different people's, um, you know, getting into the arrangement itself. I yeah. want to talk about uh, a fun, a fun guest we had on here and one of his uh, philosophies that he had. Right now, we had a brother. Big shout out to Stevie Bags. He came on here. If you have not watched the episode with Boyce Watkins and Stevie Bags, yeah. you better go check that out. But he came on here and he stated his philosophy on how he prefers to get married. And before I give y'all any more, I'm going to go ahead and play this video for y'all. Y'all check this out right here. I was born before I had a birth certificate. I'm going to die before I have a death certificate. So I don't need a marriage certificate to validate my connection with you. But society on, says on, this. Hold on, you about to piss all the women off I, right I now. I can piss I them off. Know. They need to hear it. I already know you about to piss them off right now. Because we, we done had this conversation before. We had a brother who said that same thing. Who said that, you know, he didn't want his marriage and his connection and, his, you know, the sanctity <clears throat> of the marriage itself to be validated by the government and so on and so forth. Which, I get that. Um, But a lot of women, they don't really, that's a false sense of security for them paperwork. your word alone is just a false sense of security uh, we can have paperwork we can have a, a, a we can have an insurance policy to make sure you straight if something happens to me or vice versa we can we can create our own our own contract i won't even i hate the word contract that's what this is, what it is. the prefix the contract is con i want a covenant the contract bro i'm tired of contract we are covenant people bro and because we have not been standing no covenant that's why these things don't work for us Yes. A ceremony? We live. Oh, back. Yo, so live. Look, right now, y'all just seen a clip from us. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the link to the IG. If y'all don't follow us on, out on IG, go ahead and follow and, us now. And, and here's another thing. I want to get this poll popping on this one because okay, what I okay. want to know is, ladies, will you marry, okay? Will you get into a marriage without a marriage license? Because just for context, for the people for whatever reason didn't see it, my brother here, Stevie Bags, he said he's okay with marrying a sister, but he does not want a physical contract. He said marriage is a covenant, not a contract. The union does not need to be, you know, verified by the government. He can literally get insurance documents together and all <laughs> these things for them to have 
the, her to have a you know an, a level of a sh- insurance or equity in whatever they build, but he does not want to get the state, the government involved in his marriage. Brittany, tell me what's your thoughts on that. I mean, you're not married. Mm. You're not getting married. You're in a committed relationship that you had a ceremony for to say, I love you, but you're not actually married. So it's the government. So the government is what makes you married, not legally, necessarily. You have to be legally married in order for the government to be able to enforce that contract and provide you with certain protections. You have to be legally married. So like you can't if, if, if we are ceremonially married and married in spirit before God, that's cool. But we can't file married on our taxes. We're still yeah. single. Right? I just think that's a ridiculous idea. I, I mean, just think that's really ridiculous. Like, it makes no sense. A woman can't get alimony from a man she's not legally married to, right? A woman can't get equity in a house from a man she's not legally married to. He would have to make sure she's on the deed. She may have to be on the mortgage. You know what I mean? There's more steps you have to take, whereas when you are married, you don't have to take most of those steps because I'm his wife. There's no question about it. Is he going to have a will? Mm. If he doesn't have a will, then she's just his little friend in the yeah. obituary, and the huh. his... His estate yeah. is going to go by his descendants. Now, because right? you're talking about uh, an estate plan. Like, th- right. that's what you're talking about. So, I mean, the likelihood that the average man is going to do that level of detail Correct. when it comes to prepping his family legally is unlikely. I mean, it's not even people preparing their personal lives Correct. like that. We was in the real estate wholesaling business. We know how families do when things get passed on. Hey, but- since none of us can agree. We just gonna split the proceeds, right? Yeah. So I, I think that's a ridiculous notion because this is the thing. I truly believe that if you get the right woman, she is sacrificing a lot, really, her life for the pursuit of the family mm-hmm. and the direction that you lead them into. So my thing is at minimum, you can put in a legal commitment right. what's what's you know typically known as the basic commitment to go ahead and move forward with the relationship so i do think that a woman that just signs up for something like that i just think you just got the the rug pulled from or or like (laughs) what bamboozled because i just think that's kind of (laughs) crazy that somebody would even do that but i dropped the poll so i want you guys to let us know i mean are we am i tripping ladies only would you get married without a marriage license agreement or uh some kind of agreement with the state no no he he did say he'll he'll get an agreement but it's gonna be outside of a marriage license involved now the thing about it is you know what i truly think difference what i don't understand well what happens is here's what i think because i think in many ways the brothers that do feel that way is is fear it's really fear of their relationship not working and them losing what they've built and having the state involved i think them seeing whether on media or however it's portrayed things consistently not going their way now they just typically they pretty much just saying i want to opt out of this whole process altogether but if you're willing to sign some sort of agreement or have a will or you know put her name on the house it's the same pro you're going to go through the same process if i draw up a contract between you and i right yeah, now right. and it says you're supposed to do this you're supposed to do that abc xyz and you breach that contract i could still take you to court for it so right. what is the difference yeah to be I, honest, I think people that communicate that they probably not really you know educated in terms of the things that you can do like the prenuptial the postnuptial right. and things that you can do you know trust and so forth to protect your assets they just kind of just have this level of fear when it comes to getting done dirty in the justice system right so real quick because i want to talk about that too but you know men that get done dirty specifically <laughs> as it relates to child support and oh, y'all trying to take all their God. money i want to talk about that but real quick i want to give a shout out to two new members who just joined us not rocking with us shout out to Queen Consciousness 22 and yeah. shout out to Teresa Davenport. We already got three members, guys. We want for 15 again. We Let's did do it. we did 16 on Monday. Yeah. Let's do another 15 members if you want to support the channel. And shout out to Andre Hatchet. Twenty dollars super chat, Andre. I mean, we we feed we feed my families off. Andre, and matter of fact, hold on, show on the way. <laughs> Check this out. Fun fact: Andre is also a brother that does not want a marriage agreement. In his newest upcoming marriage. Of course, Andre, Andre, I'm sorry I'm putting of you on course. blast here, brother, but it's relevant. Andre, please give me an explanation in the chat. We're going to come to it. Just please give me an explanation to why I say fear. 
You see Ryan over here. He didn't say this shit in your face, but he just went crazy on you behind on this on this mic just now. He just went hard on your ass just now. Give me an explanation to why you feel that way, why you do not want to get no marriage license with these women's. Yeah, I think <laughs> yeah, I also think that the caveat to that is someone that's been married before. Right. Uh, like I, I, I got married at 21. I ain't had shit. Right. She ain't had shit. Right. So at the end of the day, when, when we split up, uh, we still didn't have a lot of wealth, unfortunately, because those were some prime years where we could have did some damage because we didn't have a bunch of kids in the household and stuff like that. But I believe that, you know, um, there's a lot of people out here that you ladies are dating. These are men that have been married once or twice. And so, like you said, they do have that fear because, you know, now they make a little bit more money and they have homes and they got cryptocurrency and shit like that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? And, and, and so they don't they don't want to lose that. But at the same time, if, if you look at again, if you look at it from a business standpoint, there's measures that you can take that, to protect your assets because you may have children prior to that relationship, you may have some things in place, your mom or your daddy, your, your little brother just can't get it right. You may have some things in place that will you know, protect those assets before the marriage. But marriage to me, man, that's, that's a, uh, a wealth hack. Yeah. Marriage is a wealth hack because you have two individuals with common goals. And if, if you really all in, you could do some damage with your spouse. Right. You can make some things happen. Like if you're going to trust anybody in this world, you you can trust that person because it's a mutual benefit moving forward for that legacy. Now, let me let me ask you this, man. Like cuz it sounds like you are pro marriage. <laughs> like hell. Do you see yourself getting back in one? Third time? Uh, past the kavas. I'm a child brother. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's very possible. You know, uh, I've been I've been divorced for um, next week will be seven years, but I don't even look at it as a divorce. I look at it as I've been single. And that's a good mindset because that means I'm not holding on to that baggage because I don't look at that as uh, no longer a, a defeat. It was something that happened. It was a chapter in my life and, and I moved on for it. So um, is it possible? It's possible. You know, um, but I'm on a mission right now, man. I'm on a mission. Uh, I got to get back a lot of stuff that I had lost from a personal standpoint. Uh, some things that I owe my children, legacy. You know, I got to set some things up. And so if she is in alignment to where I'm going, then absolutely. Uh, I want to talk about this. So I wanted to move to the child custody, but like we said, the supporters dictate the direction of the channel, even this conversation. <laughs> so I want to get into this real quick, but I'm going to drop this super chat. We Shout out to Daniela. We didn't miss you, Daniela. Shout out to Daniela Zambrano. She says, you cannot assume that fathers are absent. This is a very toxic narrative. Mm. Uh, you should have to prove that any parent is not fit to have 50-50 custody. Shout out to the ladies that like to stand up for the men. I, did. I, I agree with that, I Daniela. That. Shout out to you. Now, Andre Hatchet is moving the conversation exactly what I was going to go because it's not always that the man is bringing the bread and the assets to the table. Mm. In these new relationships, yeah. it's some women that's taking these house dads. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand it, but they cool with having a house dad. Yeah. I think those relationships don't work out. Until it's time for a divorce. So let's talk mm -hmm. about that. Andre says, if Rihanna was your best friend, mm -hmm. would you tell her to get married to ASAP Rocky? Absolutely not. And, wow. and, so what are the women telling you? When these women get in the bag and they got these men that's bringing a little bit less in terms of financial support, what are they coming to you? Like, what are they really sharing with you? The double standard is real, right? So... In the same way that I talked about men who want women to be women in the house, but also want them to go out and work just like them. I'm going to talk about women who are okay with having the men stay at home, take care of kids. But when it's time for them to get a divorce, they want to say, oh, but he's a man. I mean, well, it doesn't matter. You're the breadwinner. 
You provided him with the lifestyle. You wanted an easier lifestyle where you didn't have to take care of kids, do laundry, cook, clean. You were okay with the roles reversing, quote unquote. Mm -hmm. And because of that, you're going to be treated by law in the same way that he would be treated if it was him. Mm. Right. You're okay with it happening when it's a woman getting what she needs to get from a man because she's performing wifely duties. Just because he's a man doesn't mean that he's not entitled to the same protections of a marriage that a woman as a dependent spouse will be as well. Be real with me. Yeah. Those women who come to you and they upset about their man who wasn't supporting financially, they were, when they come up to you upset, do they have respect for that man? Or are they like, come on, you're a man. He should get a, he should be able to work for himself. No, I have, I've had women that have been completely okay with their men being at home and they are fine with that. And like, then they divorced when, his ass. And then when they did a divorce, <laughs> no, 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 no. The one I'm thinking about specifically was a few years ago. She was a pharmacist. Mm-hmm. Crazy hours, right? Long hours, worked all the time, brought home a lot of cheddar, right? Yeah. Her husband was a great father and like a great house husband. And when he divorced her, okay, she couldn't believe it. She had to pay him alimony. Why did he divorce? Why did he divorce her? Um, Damn. I can't. I'm, I'm fuzzy on the details. I don't know if she was cheating. I don't think she was cheating. It was something going on. I can't remember. So, uh, she, but she was mistreating him. Basically. <laughs> that's and, but oh, but yeah. that's, it just seems like whenever a man is in that position in a relationship and the power, uh, like, unfortunately, because, you know, this is the sad truth of it, because power really does corrupt people. And what you say is that typically the men typically have the upper hand of power in relationship Correct. and they tend to abuse it, which we see happen all the time. We see yeah. people anywhere in any position in life with power, they can tend to abuse it. And the thing about it is when women have that power, I can actually say, and when I'm specifically the power of providing and leading in that area, that is one of the most toxic relationships. Yeah. yeah. Because agree. now if a woman does not, or is at risk of respect of Mm -hmm, her husband, mm -hmm. that's one of the most dangerous situations. That affects every area of life, the sex, how she communicates with him, conflict resolution, the way she talks to him in front of the children, the way the children respect the father, Mm -hmm. everything goes downhill. So I really recommend, I I get how we trying to get in this progressive ass place, but fellas, if y'all watching this, I'm not saying that you can't be in a position where your lady is making more money than you and still be a man. I'm not saying that. You can damn sure be a man in that position, but, all I'm saying is work your ass off to make sure that you're trying to swing the game and put yourself back on top. Don't get comfortable in that place because that is always a temporary place in relationships. It should never be permanent. But no, no, he a- accepted the role exactly. of a house dad. Exactly. So you're saying don't accept the role of a house dad. No, I mean, that, that's what I consider you accepting the role of a helpmate. But but listen, but, see, help but, but listen to how y'all talk about that and then think about why women are the first ones to initiate a divorce. Because it's not because of her of nature. the way you're talking about. No, 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 no. no it's no, not no, about no. how I but talk about called, it. But if you just said he's a helpmate, then a woman in that position is the same thing, right? She is a helpmate. She's a, she's designed to be a helpmate. But, but see, it's the way that you said it, Tashaun. It was very like, he's a helpmate. It's, all, it's, it's almost... It is disrespectful what it is. to call a man a helpmate. So if a it's, it is disrespectful, but if it's disrespectful to call a man a helpmate, and you think about that in that way, then how do you think that a lot of men are treating their wives in marriages? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Helpmate is I can love a helpmate. I can love the hell out of my helpmate to the max. I want to love my helpmate. I want to invest and build with my helpmate. A man should not necessarily be putting himself in a in that role in the relationship because that's now unnatural. I, I, I understand what like you're weakness. saying, but what I'm telling you is that those women that come in my office and sit down tell me that when their husband looked at them as a helpmate, it was a lack of respect. It was a lack of consideration. That it was, was a lack of a bunch of things. But but I think that, that when we talk about narrative and mindset, right, the way that you call that man a helpmate, and let me be clear, I don't remember the reason that they got divorced, but I remember my client. And one thing she always raved about was how great of a man he was in that house with those kids. Wow. And how awesome he was to in helping her do what she needed to do. Because I think what ended up happening was she was going to school to be a pharmacist and he needed to be at the house with the kids because what she her program was so intensive that she couldn't do both. So once he took that back seat to allow her to progress and do what she needed to do to invest in herself, yeah. he 
fell into that role, was comfortable there. He excelled in it and she respected him. Now she was mad. He ended up getting custody of those kids. She had to pay him alimony. <laughs> okay. Like she couldn't wrap her mind around that. And that was a double standard, right? She was just like, I don't understand. He's a man. How do you You're supposed that? to get screwed in the court system. You're a man. Correct. That was her mindset. That was her mindset. Yeah. But I, at the same time, I had to point out to her, but you told me that he was a great dad and that he was the one that went to the school. You don't know those kids' teachers. You don't go to the doctor's appointments. You're not the one cooking and cleaning. You said that. And once I broke it down for her like that, she understood. And right. she wasn't, she was not, she never talked about him like he's a helpmate. Right. It wasn't that that level of um, indifference towards his role in the house. And I think that that's the difference between the way you said so, it so about listen, that man. I think the helpmate is the is one of the most important roles. That person so then literally. So why can't a man do it? Because no, 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 that no, no, is no, no, not no. of his nature. We're, you said we're stronger, right? Okay. We built stronger, right? We're not the same. We're not equal, right? Uh -huh. And we're, the reason we're built the way we're built is because we're designed to have a certain role. We're built stronger to take our ass outside and be strong okay. and do strong shit. Y'all are built to have nice voluptuous breasts that have milk so you can put it in a child's mouth and feed them. Yeah. So we're designed a certain way so we can all bring balance to each other. Mm -hmm. So when he, he decides to go against nature, and when he decides to put his titty in a child's mouth, that's when things start going left. And that's when the that's when the that's when the <laughs> dynamic of the relationship gets very, very unhealthy. And I, I don't think we're gonna understand. Don't even talk. No, you know, you know that's point. weak. You know I, no, that's no, weak. No, 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 it's not weak. But what I'm telling you is the the tone in your voice when you called him a helpmate is the same way that men look at women and disrespect their role that's in a marriage true. and that yes it is no no no, no, no. that's toxic not, no, no. you that's are yes it men. is that's toxic unfortunate men. that's unfortunate well this thing in Come actuality on only the top one percent of marriages is really surviving so maybe that is most men is considering something Come on but now. i don't know now i can't say whether those women were actually good helpmates or those guys were just toxic but i still stand firm when a man puts himself in a position to be sole caregiver or the, the primary caregiver for the kids, I just don't understand how a woman is able to revere and respect that man. I mean, how is she able to have admiration for this man when she has to go into the workforce, the tr very trudgeous workforce, and get all of these accomplishments in these male-dominated environments and then come, come home to you? And, and she's around all of those very successful masculine men. It just seems kind of backwards. And I just don't, I, I don't, I just strongly advise men not to take that kind of role because at the end of the day, women, I mean, this is the thing, women, your emotions fluctuate with the tide. So at some point, you working this hard, you getting beat up at work, you're going to have a level of resentment for this man that you will then see is yeah. on vacation at home. So to even Slave. accept that role or That's that position, good. I just think is very dangerous for the for for a relation a long term relationship to be successful. Well, I'm, 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 I'm curious. That's I'm why curious. a lot. But hold on. But that's why a lot of women don't want to be stay at home moms anymore. Also, because you have men that come home and tell those women all you do is sit around at the house I and you agree. don't do shit, right? Sure. And then the I women agree. are like, "What are you talking about? I've been running around chasing these three three under three, right?" cleaning up this house, cooking you dinner. What do you mean I don't do shit? And those are my marriages that are 25, 30 years in and she's been doing all this shit at the house all this time and the man is like, she ain't getting a half of my money. She ain't done nothing. Fair enough. And, see, that, nothing. and I agree with you. I, I think the role of the person, the caretaker, is one of the most undervalued roles Correct. in our society. Yes. I 100% agree. And I think that just shows our value system as a society because we just, in generally, we don't value family. Mm -hmm. Like, as a culture and a society, we don't value. So I don't value the fact that you're actually teaching the kids every day. I don't value the fact that you're actually the person cultivating their mind and their thoughts, mm -hmm. making sure they're not watching bullshit on TV, making sure they're doing their homework every single day, creating great human beings and citizens of our nation. That's going to be the next generation. So I 100% I, I agree with you, but whether that's man, a man saying it or a woman, I th it's no, no, no. Let me be clear. Whether it's a man tr devaluing that position or a woman not ha uh, having value for her own position at home, I think it's all toxic uh -huh. because I really do believe that we truly need to put more weight on that because I think a lot of the shit we're going through now is because 
like we just not like these kids crazy as hell. Yeah. Like we're not, we we not really investing in these wild ass mm-hmm. kids. And I think social media is really doing more raising of children than we are. Social media has more to do with the minds and the thoughts and the habits and the values of our children than we do. YouTube got a hole on these babies. Oh my yeah. God. There, there's also um, a level of dysfunction. You have to admit to have that type of dynamic. Um, only and mainly because, you know, what are, what are you uh, what are you showing your daughter? What are you showing your um, son when it comes to that? And obviously, everybody's household is going to be different, right? And and for some, it may work for them at that moment. But when you start talking about longevity and um, what actually has been working it's a dis- it's a dysfunction the, the woman has so much pressure as it is right so now she's coming home to her soft supple husband <laughs> right supple that's crazy <laughs> hell of an right? adjective <laughs> right and, and, and so you know and 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 i remember being in a relationship or even being in a marriage and when she had to pick um going into a new career or actually being at home and even like creating a home-based business. She wanted to do that. She was like, Rob, I don't, I don't want to do this. If I could, I just give you the money and you pay all the, I don't want to pay the bills. I just give you money. I don't, I don't want to do any of that. I don't want to be out there. I want to be under your covering. Right. And so that's why I think that again, when you start talking about marriage and you start talking about um, a covenant and how a person really feels and what they want to do, not just now, long term, even if they want to do that now. OK, you know what? I tried it. I did it. I did it for a year, did it for a couple of years. But I don't I don't want to do that. I, I don't see too many women or any women that want to do that. Forever. Yeah. Like, well, we're going to wait till you retire. You know what? Good question. Brittany, let me ask you this question right here. What? This supple house husband <laughs> that we're describing here. Would Slam. you marry him? I mean, I'm talking about the one of the best house husbands you can imagine. Take care of the kids, cook, clean, everything. I'm talking about he's on it. Father of the damn century. Would you marry him? No. You're the financial leader of the household, by the way. I'm going to make sure you understand no. that. That ain't happening. He's weak, right? That's, that's, that's not happening. No, it's not that it's weak. I just want to stay at home. He's weak. Yeah. No, it's, it's not, <laughs> you can't provide. It's not that, right? It's not that I don't want to have to work for how I don't want that yeah. responsibility. But you, I mean, you could work. For, you could work really hard, and you could put yourself in a position to, for, for passive income. I don't and, want to. Okay. Okay. Why not? I don't want to. I work now. I'm tired. I want to lay down. So, yeah. but, but don't you think most women think just like you? No. I know a lot of women that don't think like. No, that. no I think a lot they of women have a fear of being. In a position in where a man can control them financially and being stuck in a marriage. So they well, like have, so that's wait, 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 fear-based exactly, thinking. Exactly. Exactly. They don't have toxic. a desire, but it's based on fear. It's She's based toxic. on fear. It's based on fear. I, that I understand. Is any healthy but, women doing that? <laughs> I mean, I know women that like to work as well. Like they don't want to. I know. I know a lot of women that say they want to be stay-at-homes, and they get home, and they're like, "I'm bored. I hate it here," and then they go back to work. Right. So that, that. happens very no, often. I mean, they're probably right. bored because this thing. To keep a woman is can do so many things. So to keep a woman engaged, you really gonna be have to build something. So if you got your woman yeah. engaged, ain't no point of her getting fucking bored because it's a lot of work to do. But now if you're not providing instruction, you're not adding her to a part of your life, you don't have a vision for what you are doing moving forward, then yeah, a woman is gonna be bored and unengaged. And if you're not incentivizing your woman, because I read the Quran and, and I read the Bible, both talk about incentivizing your woman when she does good work. So that's not only being affection, this is actually gifting your wife. Like this is promoted in the Quran, gift your wife. So I think when guys don't have this level of structure, yeah. then why would a woman want to be obedient to that? Or why would a woman want to stay, like feel like she's kept at home, which I understand. Yeah, it feels unappreciated. Yeah. No, I, I 100% agree. Man, and, and I, I think, because I don't really see the fellas in the, the, the chat like that. I want y'all to understand, fellas. They are in the chat, this, though. No. This, this ain't no attack. Yo, so shout out to Weedy504. I disagree with you, Ty. I work two jobs. My life, my wife works one. I pay 70%. She paid 30%. But I cut the grass when she wash and dry and folds them. No, I think Weedy, I think we're on the same page about this. 
And I'm glad you're paying 70, she's paying 30. And I hope, Weedy, I hope it's the goal for you to pay 100%. No, no. I mean, and here's the thing. Even if he don't pay 100%, he still is the, he's still the primary yeah. provider yeah. of the household. Yeah, this is, no, this is not what you, we're talking about a brother who is the home husband, the brother who is not contributing financially. And his responsibility and role is to manage the family and the household. And what we're really acknowledging here is the sad truth is no matter how well he excels at that position, the likelihood of that relationship having success is very low because we're playing out of our natural roles. Therefore, the just respect, just like for me, I could have a woman who's the greatest business person in business. I'm talking about the absolute greatest yeah. business person. Right. But if she comes to me and she is not equally or better excelling at the other things, those other things that are important to me, the yeah. wifely things, the womanly things, then I don't give a damn about that, how well of a, how good of a provider you are. That means absolutely nothing to me. I just don't put value on that as a man. Mm -hmm. And because we're so different, I think we value different things mm -hmm. in our partners. I think you just said you value a man that could take that weight off of you mm -hmm. and I could put you in a position to just relax. Mm -hmm. I value a, a woman that could really manage the hell out of a family. I walk up in the house and I, I walk up in there and I smell some, some chicken that been roasting all damn day. <laughs> and I know I don't have to think about what I want to eat because it's funny, men, we get hungry three times a day and we never know what the hell we're going to eat because we never, we didn't prepare for that. Yeah. So the fact that you taking that off my plate and you thinking about me in these ways, that's valuable to me. So now just, hopefully, just, hopefully, women are being those good helpmates because it's one thing for a man to say, hey, say I don't it. value the helpmate. Yeah. But it's another thing for a woman to actually be dedicated to learning her man and identifying where she can provide value. Because I don't necessarily know if all women know that that is a wifely duty to get mm. in where you fit in. Yeah. You know what mm. I mean? So I do think it's a lot of work on both sides that we got to do. I don't think Brittany could cook, though. I don't, I don't know how. <laughs> Baby, I could cook wherever you go. Don't play. Okay. Yo, listen. I want to show y'all this outfit Brittany got on because she's looking fly. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You might be in yeah. here. Look, your way out of this work might be right here. One of these 715 <laughs> people in the chat. Yeah. I'm loving it. Yes. Yeah, I, I think that uh, alignment is important because even as you progress in life, you have different needs. So even if that woman is in her career or she's experiencing entrepreneurship or she's at, you know, um, whatever she got going on, there's still going to be a transition. So I just don't see that brother being that for the duration, right? Because just like uh, some women that are um, housewives, right? At some point, they still peak of interest of maybe wanting to start a business or maybe, you know, somewhat of a career or whatever they want to do. They don't want that on the back burner forever. So even to have a brother that you, you won't do that forever. You, you have no other ambition and to create legacy for the fact you going you going to leave it up to her. <laughs> you going you going to leave it up to her to do it. I think that's where the dysfunction comes. And again, if you do have a conversation, that's your arrangement. You just got to look how long can that last? Yo, listen, I want everybody in here right now to make sure y'all press this subscribe button. We got yeah. a really healthy amount of people up in here. Yo, over 700. So I'm going to go ahead right and listen. Press subscribe, y'all. I'm going to go ahead and drop that subscribe button real quick. But I want to get, being that we hit over 700. Yes. I, me personally, I think it's because of the pressure our supporters are putting on everybody that's watching this right now. <laughs> so nice. shout out to Fancy Cashwell. Shout out to JJ. Shout out to Carla Beautiful Air. Shout out to King Anderson, KN, yep. Queen Constance 22, Tanisha Miles, Weedy 504, Wifey. Shout out to all of the members who are going crazy. Officially over 700. Wow. And we only two hours in. Now, Real quick, Weedy 504 came in with the super chat. Mom, yes. say you pay where you laid a man have to provide. Mom, mom, say you paid where you laid a man have to provide. That's the, okay. You said okay. it a lot better. Yeah. That's, mom, mom say, mom say you pay where you laid a man have to provide. And then look, we got another one. Shout out to the super chat. Shout out to Therese Buford. Get that your just super chat, y'all. Let's Q and A time. And uh, we got Larry Love Junior eighty two. Larry Love. That sounds cool. Right? Larry Love. What's the average? Oh my God. 
Larry Love in trouble. Larry Love says, what's the average child support payment for one child in Georgia? Is there an average, Brittany? Brittany, come like, on. Give us that. that. What's the average payment or how is child support calculated in the state of Georgia? How does that work? Child support is calculated um, based on each party's gross income, right? So it's not what you bring home after taxes. It is what you make before taxes. Um, so they take those numbers, okay, put them into a calculator that we use, and there are going to be certain expenses and deductions that can be considered, right? So if you are paying for a child's health care, if you're paying for child care, if you're paying for extraordinary educational expenses like tuition, if you're paying for um, medical expenses that are abnormal like speech therapy, wow. all of that goes into a child support calculator. Based on whatever that calculator says, it spits out a number. Okay, so if you have a man that makes... I don't know, $300,000 and a woman who has no job, then that child support number is going to be pretty expensive, right? But he is also going to get the credit for paying for the health care because he, she can't pay for it or the tuition because she's not paying for it. So that'll bring the number down some. Um, so that's how child support is calculated in the state of Georgia and in other states as well. That's great. And, and Brittany, because listen, Brittany, you dropping that. I want y'all to follow Brittany right now. I'm going to go ahead and drop her, drop her in the page. She's in the description. You dropping game, Brittany. You got to let me know how much time we got because I know you got the baby at home. No, no, We're not know. trying to keep you here the all baby, night. Hold on. The baby going for the summertime, honey. I don't know what y'all Oh, about. oh. We going late tonight. Hey, you heard it. That's actually relevant to my boy here. My dog, Andre Hatcher, said, I'll retire her. Oh. Hey, shout out to Andre. She she got to do Yo, I think Andre, that was a great 4, hey, no, no, he said, <laughs> but just know you're not getting a contract though at Andre, but but he'll definitely retire you. Andre's Andre's Andre, lit. Not, Andre's listen. rich and lit, just to be clear. <laughs> Shout out to Apollo 79 who just joined the membership. Apollo, listen, clearly you know where the ladies reside at because the ladies love Harley Initiated. So, men, I want y'all to join the membership so Man. maybe we can get you to shoot your shot Very at sad. one of these beautiful ladies that's already members. And then we got Wifey chiming in. She said, if the man gets sick or hurt, it's going to be up to her. I think so. So that's absolutely why it's good for your significant other to still be able yeah. to contribute in the case of an urgent matter yeah. or emergency. Yeah. But 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 Rob, I want to ask you because I want to get into the child support. That's what everybody want to know about the child support. Yeah. My man yeah. is getting screwed in the court system. Rob, <laughs> just keeping it real. <laughs> no, Rob, real. Rob, real. Let, let me know are, the, your What was your situation with child support? Are you yeah. on the hook now or what? Yeah. So um, initially with uh the divorce it was it was in the divorce decree um my youngest child first of all all my children are adults you know they're 19 and up um but i do remember being in position to where the child support was through the county right and and the county didn't give a damn you know it's it's what uh you know what those calculations were but it it also was at that particular time, uh, because it was some time ago, it did it did not consider both incomes. It just considered um, my income and the expenses. And so through that time frame, it has transitioned to both of the incomes. And in addition to that, I also had to add in my um, other children's child support. <laughs> like you can if you can get caught slipping in here, and the courts are going to be the courts. The courts are going to be like, well, look. Uh, your child support payment is eight hundred dollars, but I got you know three other kids. Where where is the child support order? If you can't provide it, if they're in another state, if they're in another county, you need to provide that. So you have to be on you have to be on your A game, right? Because the child support enforcement is going after that bread, mm. and you got to understand that's that's their job. They're not looking to give you your, your weekends and your holidays. That's right. a whole different situation. So I had to go through. Um, legitimation. Mm -hmm. Legitimation was a game changer for me because we had to mediate. So it wasn't about, okay, this is what you're going to pay. Uh, if you don't pay this, we're going to take your license. And then we're going to lock you up. Legitimation is so important um, that you have to mediate and you have to really come to the table and be like, hey, this is what's really going on. Right? And uh, here, here are the, the calculations. Uh, if you guys can agree to it, then we can go ahead and push this in front of a judge. If not, then we we about to go to court. So, Ron, when you talk about legitimation, did you have children outside of your marriage? Any children? 
Yeah. Okay. Scandal. So that's that. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. I, uh, you mean while I was married, did I have children outside of? No, like even after a marriage, have you ever had any children outside of? A yeah, marriage? Okay. yeah, I had children. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I had right. other okay. children okay. Outside, <laughs> outside of the yeah, marriage. Yeah, yeah. No, no, not now that you cheated on your back. wife and had a had side no, baby. That's not what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, no, no side no, baby. That's the only time that you can be legitimated, right? Is when you have a child out of wedlock, meaning that the parents are not married. Correct. And you have to go through the legal correct. process yeah. of legitimating your relationship. That is correct. My my last marriage, we did not have any children. So I'm I'm curious, like how do Together. guys, when you consider like how do guys like Nick Cannon, for example, like uh -huh. who has, you know, like child after child, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I think the consensus right now is he he's not paying child support. Like how is he able to have these relationships? If anybody, just just curious with, from any of you guys, how is he able to have these children and not be put on child support with his current arrangements? What do you what do you think that is? <laughs> Why are you looking like that? Better, better question. You ain't trying to be better, what? He, he, he retired his ladies Listen, though. Better question. Is it smart? <laughs> is it smart for a woman? So let's say it's a man that has financial capabilities or, or the capacity, and he says, "Hey, I don't care what happened between us. I'm always going to provide financially for my children." Do you think the woman should still go pursue legal child support? Or or legal was it what is it legally enforced child support? I think it depends on what his at what he's actually doing. You can't go on word, right? So does he provide when you call him and say, "Hey, I need you to pay half of the daycare or pay the daycare. I need you to help with diapers. I need you to pick up wipes. I need you to send groceries this week." Is he doing that? If he is, then I mean, I don't really see the need because he's providing financially for the child. If he's not, then go get child support, right? I think mm. a lot of women are spiteful, though, and will go put a man on child support that's already providing and then get less than what he was doing yeah. to begin with. That's what I was going to mm. say. And, and men always like consider that a win. Right. Like, I was giving her a 1000 and now she took me to court. Now I'm giving her <laughs> 600 Right. And I mean, that realistically is a win for him because now he's probably going to be petty and only give you yeah, what the minimum, the, the minimum of what the court says right so and I the think, child really loses and the, it's the child that the loses end. correct and that's what i wanted to say because your little comment earlier oh. Ryan, you said <laughs> that you know the court be beating these men over the head that's not how people should look at child support child mm. support really is for the benefit of the child yeah. a part of the way that the calculator um comes up with the number is it takes both of your gross incomes and puts it together and then comes up with a number that you would spend on that child a month so tashana if you made five thousand and i made five thousand a month our income combined will be ten thousand dollars a month they would say okay your income combined is ten thousand dollars if y'all were living in the house together it would cost you up fifteen hundred dollars a month for this child right. every single month two thousand whatever that number comes out to right and then based on this number fifteen hundred Who's the custodial parent and who's not? If I'm the custodial parent, okay, we're, you're going to have a larger percentage or be responsible for a larger percentage of that number, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where those calculations and expenses kind of come in. If you get a credit, if you pay for this, I get a credit if I pay for that. So I think what people don't understand is the court is trying to compensate for the fact that a child is now in two different households, right. spending more time with one parent. And this is the number that the court says, or this calculator says, it costs a month. So because you're not the custodial parent, you don't spend as much money in your house on the child, you have to provide this number because it's it has to be supplemented and provided to the other parent who has more expenses. The light bill is higher, the groceries are higher, the water bill is higher because there's another person living in the house. If you're not the custodial parent, you don't have that responsibility. Your bills, quote unquote, are automatically going to be less than the person who has a child full time. Okay, so I just want to make sure I'm with you on this. You said the child support is for the kid. I see where you're going. <laughs> okay, so you see where I'm going. It's for the benefit of the child. Benefit of the child. So if I'm, you know, divvying out my child support, <laughs> I'm on time every month, and I pull up to my now ex-wife's crib mm -hmm. and she got the chanel bag mm. and she got the new whip oh, wow. mm. and she got the really nice fully furnished den 
New sh- new refrigerator and a new nigga in the passenger. And a new nigga <laughs> in the passenger. Should I be upset about that as no, a man? Right. Not, should I be upset about not that? Not if your child support ain't paying for it and your child is going without. Now, if you come to the house and that woman is suited and booted, hair down to her ass, nails done, hair done, everything did, and your child looks a mess, right? Ain't been to the doctor, dirty pamper on. Ain't ate all day. That's a problem, mm. right? That's a problem. But if everybody is living good, your child is financially taken care of. Don't come at her like that. Well, let me ask you, uh, just just on some personal, just on a personal note. <laughs> personal. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Stop the presses. Shout out to Macia Hughes. I appreciate the holistic approach you guys bring to the world of relationship dynamics, yeah. having conversations that bring about unity and understanding. A lot of other channels add to the division, in my opinion. You guys are repairs of the breach. Continue to grow. If that ain't the most hella five super chat, That's I have dope. Ever seen. $100 super chat. That's a hundred dollars super the, chat. Yo, listen, drop the bill. You balling. Crazy. Matter of fact, look. Matter of fact, look, slide, slide, slide and Ryan DMs real quick. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You got right. A, how about you, woman, right there? I never thought I'd be a yeah, house yeah. husband, but for you, maybe we can <laughs> for, for you, you baby. For you, baby. It's crazy. For you. <laughs> you might put the apron but, but on. But I want to notice, Brittany, listen. You like to get personal what? I do like to get personal because that? I like to take the theory, then put it to the life, and then we get experience. You know what, what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's talk about it. Did you, because you have a child yourself. I do. Did you end up exercising your child support option? I did. Why is that? Like, what What about you and your relationship said, I'm exercising this? Was um, it that he pissed you off or no. was it that he was not being responsible? He was not being responsible. Okay. So, I, I okay. He went from being responsible to not being responsible. Okay. And why, so is, why is that, though? Like, because you see this happening all the time. Mm-hmm. Is it that guys get pissed off at the woman? Most of the time. To spite the woman. And they stop, they stop taking care of their child? Correct. Oh, my God. All the time. That's probably the number one reason. The quickest way to hurt a woman is to hurt her child. Mm. Mm. I thought the quickest way was to get a get a new chick. <laughs> no, what, bro. What, what, once once he once she sees her, you have to get a new chick, right? Once, he, once she sees her Mr. working on my with, third with, with a new chick. She going to hey, she gonna hit him in the pockets. Yeah. And so keep in mind, Rob is he actually coaches men yeah, yeah. how to date after divorce. Definitely. Very so that's important. that's the perspective that we get right now. So, very interesting. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what I do find interesting is, is I find that um in the getting to know process, women like to know if there is a healthy relationship, if that guy has um a child, and if there is a healthy relationship with the child's mother. Um, that happens a lot. Um, on the other hand, what we don't hear about is if that guy inquires the relationship of the child's father and uses that as a way to determine if it's a good fit or not. I think that's something that is uh, a double standard. But but more importantly, when when we start talking about, you know, the kids and, and are they being taken care of, I think emotionally and physically get swept under the rug. We go straight to finances, right? Because even, even if she asked me, well, are you caught up in your child support? Because women do ask that, mm. right? Because, right, they That's ask that all the time. That's a good question. Um, but do they ask, you know, how is your, your kid emotionally with, you know, the split up? And if you guys are co-parenting, how often does do you get that question? Mm. I don't think I've ever gotten that question. I think they, that's they a good, the wrong questions. That that sounds like well, no, I think it's a good question, but it's other questions that you There's need to additional ask as well. Question in, in addition to, right? So um, I think that's really important um, that we look at that and the expectation of of my position if I'm dating you and you have children, right? The expectation of the father uh, or a father figure, right? So and and the reason why I say that is if that if that guy asks, can he ask? Well, is is your child's father in in their life? Is is that a fair question to ask? Be and the expectation of me if we're going to be together. What is the expectation for me mm. in, in my That's position? That's a very fair question. I get asked that question with yeah. any man that I date, and we have that conversation yeah. up front. Yeah, I they, usually have. They that ask you like kind of what's what you need from me. Well, I initiate. 
I've gotten asked first and I've initiated the conversation. Yeah. I think it's important, especially in our, I'm in my thirties. Right. So yeah, I yeah. think it's an important question. I'm not in my early twenties where it's like, whatever. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, right, so right. yeah, I initiate that um, and say, Hey, you know, I have a daughter. Da, 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 da. This is the status I've had. Most of the time men ask me, where is her dad and what's the status and what happened with that? And I'll yeah. say, this is what happened. This is where he is. Right. This is how involved he is. This is how involved he's not. Yeah. And if we were to take this to the level that I would want to reach, this is what will be expected of you. Are you comfortable with that? And what is that? What is that expectation, by the way? Because you I think it's get in my business. So bad. Well, I think it's, well, I, I can guess because I automatically assume anytime I'm, you know, I see a woman with children, I automatically assume she's vetting for a father Correct. or a father figure right. in her child's life. And that yeah. just makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Because and why would you bring that, anything less? And the actual biological father doesn't have to be absent for that either. I think that yeah. people and men, women, everyone needs to understand that if you're going to have a blended family and have a new partner, they should be a father figure, even if they're your child's father is around. Yeah. Right. Because you don't want to have, if you have custody, like I have my daughter in my right. house. If I have her in my house and I bring a man into my home and he's there, he's going to be there with her more than her father is, mm, right? That's yeah. just the way it's set up. So he mm. needs to be a father figure. Yeah. And he ain't moving in though, right? Who? The the, the man. He At some point. When, oh, he he gonna move into your house? Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So, uh, that's, a, that's a good question. When does when do you think is a healthy time for a man to get introduced to your child? Like when oh, when do you Lord. think that's a healthy time to do that? I mean, I can't tell other people what to do yeah. in their right. homes, right? But I know for me, um, it's an extensive period of time. I've dated men um, for a year, and they've never laid eyes on my child before. Honestly, I, I don't think a yeah. woman should introduce her child to a new man until that man has expressed serious long-term commitment, mm -hmm. that interest for serious long-term commitment. And he says... So now it's time for me to meet your kid. Not you say, yeah. I think it's time for, you, for, for, for for my kid to meet you. Mm -hmm. So I, cause I think that man is a man that is ready and willing to take on that level of responsibility. But mm -hmm. I want to real quick close nice. out this poll because we over 300 votes. So now it's official, broke two records. This is over 300. Ladies only, would you get married without a marriage license or any kind of state mandated agreement? <laughs> and ladies are like, hell nah, we wouldn't do that. Amen. So ladies, shout out to y'all for that one. Shout out to the 23% down for the love. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the A. Hey, I see you, baby. Love is all we need. I see you. We almost missed this one. Shout out to the beautiful KN because KN has been really been a member since day one. Day one. But she just sent over her first super chat. Men need to find out all the expenses for a child is pricey, especially when they're younger and then when they're teen. So pretty much it's, it costs a lot to raise a kid is what, yeah, what she's saying. Yeah, for sure. You know what? <sighs> Man, now that's that, that, that's that, that's that's a really good point. I want I know we just got this beautiful long note about how wonderful we are, but I kind of want to get a little dark. <laughs> Go dark. dark I kind of want to get a little dark, all right? <laughs> so, why do you look at me when you say that? Because you're the expert. Cuz you pop off, that's why. You the expert. So I got to get dark with Ryan, you. Don't tell my business. All right? <laughs> so let's talk about it. If I'm a man and I'm in a relationship, and I'm knowing I want to make my way up out of here. All right? Ladies, understand Understand the mindset here. You, this for you, lie. This for you, ladies, all right? And I know I want to position myself the best way possible to protect myself in a divorce. What are some things that I might do as a man to position myself to get the most favorable outcome, to win mm -hmm. in the battle of court? What are some things that I should do in my relationship to position myself for the best outcome. I don't know. No, oh. no, 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 no. I want you to, you got, so this is the thing, you got to give up the secrets because- we got They're know. not secrets if I give them up. Well, this is the thing, if you, if we gonna, just, I, I don't promote divorce, but I'd be damn sure. If we in one, I want to win. <laughs> so yeah. what do I got to do? And ladies, make sure and ladies listen, if y'all hear your husband pulling some of this, you already know he subscribed to Harley Initiate. <laughs> <laughs> but you need to know, you got to know both sides of the coin. Yeah. I think if anything, this is preparing people more than anything else. You're probably saving more marriages and allowing people to want to work with you more than anything else. But I just want to know, put us on game. Let the people know, baby. <laughs> As a legal disclaimer, mm -hmm. 
I would never advise a client on how to conceal or spoliate marital assets and funds. Okay. But I have seen situations where breadwinners in a marriage will begin to move assets around, obviously, start putting other people on certain accounts oh. and interests, right? Because then if you have an account that's worth $200,000, but you now share that account with a family member, a child or something like that, that interest goes down from 100% to 50%. And now you only have 50% that you have to split between your yourself and your wife rather than the full 100%. And then magically, after the divorce is over, that account gets transferred back into your name solely, and you get the other amounts. Wow. Slam. I've seen things like that happen. Um, what about in the custody putting, battle? Like, how do I not get it? She's okay. still, she's don't, don't switch okay, it. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, Stay go ahead. here. Stay here. She's got more. <laughs> she's putting one more. things into trust, mm -hmm. whether they're irrevocable or revocable trust, is um, something that aids people in trying to conceal marital assets however a good lawyer can tell when you've done it so mm. usually if you're doing it for the purpose of spoliating marital assets you're doing it at a time frame that's really too close yeah. into when a divorce is occurring and a good lawyer like breakup lawyer is going to know that and Come argue that now. before the court right so um that would be one post-nuptial agreements depending on how you know far down the line you're looking if you were at Year eight, and you know by year 12, you're going to be up out of there. You might say, hey, baby, let's go ahead and do a post-nup because this is happening and this is happening and this is happening. And once you create that post-nuptial agreement, that kind of changes the game on the way that the assets are divided. If you're a business owner transferring your interests to a partner, you know, getting rid of shares in an in a mm -hmm. business. You know, you know, one that was interesting that you actually said on the last show, um, that I think is like probably even 10 times any of the ones you said, I was like super evil genius. You talked about a man who's the breadwinner that might start encouraging his woman to going back into the workforce. Oh God. <laughs> Talk to the people about this. I forgot that I even mentioned that. Um, you are increasing her earning capacity in that sense, right? So if, if you have a woman that's a retired nurse, Nurses make good money. Right. And you or say, retired attorney. And you say, <laughs> hey, baby, don't you miss working? Like, you've been at home for so long. Ain't you tired? Like, spice your life up a little bit. Oh, you know what? I do want to get out. I do want to. It would be new and fun. Okay, cool. And you give her about three years. She gets all her certification. She goes back to work. And now she went from earning $0 after 10 years of marriage to... $90,000 as a nurse, $100,000 as a nurse, $300,000 to fifty dollars as a traveling nurse, because they make a lot of money now, you know, you've increased her earning capacity. So the amount of alimony that you would have had to pay right. at $0 after 10 years goes down significantly, if not completely goes away, because she's now a breadwinner in herself, and she can support herself in her lifestyle. Ooh, if y'all, I'm big. telling y'all, this is like... I don't know if y'all ever read the 48 Laws of Power, like that clever, genius, dark book. This is like the equivalent in the divorce game. And again, y'all know we pro-marriage. But listen, <laughs> if shit go down, like you better know how to fight. Right. right? It's like yeah. you'd rather have it and not need it and need it and not, not have it. it. You already know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, is that also the exact same for women? Or are there some tricks, especially that typically give women the upper hand when tip, when, when a divorce is going down? Probably the infidelity receipts, right? Absolutely. Oh. Document yeah. infidelity always. Document really any of your grievances, <laughs> honestly yeah. and truly. Yeah. I always tell my clients, text, don't call. Text don't call oh, for for a, a record. For so a record. so so text messages are straight up documentation in the court of law. Uh huh. Mm. Wow. Unless you're dispute, and and one thing that I tell my clients to do is delete their contact so I can see the telephone number. Because if I ask you on a record, Tashawn, what's your number, and you read it out to me, then that that text message is it has your number on top of it. You can't say their fate. 
Wow. Wow. So that's one thing I would say. I'm going to have dementia um, on the stands. That, have been. <laughs> that was AI. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was artificial intelligence. <laughs> right, AI. With, with women, I always say the fortunate thing, um, if you're going to purchase that house with him, don't let him purchase that house before you get married. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So don't get engaged and buy the house. Oh, we're engaged. We're closing on our house. No, ma'am. You need to go to that courthouse. If your wedding isn't until next spring, go ahead and get married. And then... Purchase that house. So a man might be try to might try to be slick and close the house before his marriage is. Yeah. Wow. So she doesn't have access to anything prior to the marriage. Technically. So basically, it, it makes it argued. more it makes it more difficult in court Correct. to actually fight that. Correct, because it it's automatically going to be considered non marital. The right, home is non marital, right? Wow. Now there are ways to turn non marital property into marital property that gets a little more complicated, but. The presumption is if the house is purchased before the marriage, it's not marital. Yeah. But what, what what are some tips, some tips and tricks, <laughs> some tips and tricks to win in the custody battle? Uh-huh. What, what are some things that, that, a, that a man or a woman can do to win, make sure that they win custody or at least protect it to get them some level of custody in the situation? Don't move out. Wait, wait, give me that again? Don't move out of your house. I don't care how much y'all are fighting. Don't move out. Mm. Unless it's dangerous. Don't move out. And how does not moving out the house help you? The person that moves out isn't with the kids every day. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you abandon the kids when you move out? Abandon. Mostly, Unless you take the kids with you. But you can't do that. Why not? Because you're removing the kids from this, what's called the status quo. There's a standing order in every divorce or there's a presumption that you have to maintain the status quo. So if at the time of the divorce, the kids were not already living outside of the house, you can't just take them out. Mm. The court has to say that the kids can be removed from the house for whatever reason. So if we were living in a house together and we're married, we're married and you wake up one day and decide you don't want to be with me anymore and you're, I'm getting a divorce. Bye. OK, cool. You leave that house. I'm now the primary custodian of those kids. See, I, I think that makes sense because wow. it, it could be situations where somebody may think that leaving the house is best without actually knowing that that is a risk that they take when they leave the house. That's right. right. So I think that's some very good information that you put out there. I want to wow. do this real quick. A shout out to Weedio 4 He just be stirring up 504. He just be turning up stuff. He says, T shot is shot on the side. B is his type. It's the smile. <laughs> 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 That's what he said. That's what he said. I didn't make that up, bro. What's up with this man over here, man? <laughs> hey, we, listen, listen, you sending out, you sending those kind of super chats, man. You got to at least throw a nice, solid little five ten on that, man. We're gonna be That's stirring up some, some yeah. stuff. They, they, they ain't talking. They talking about it up. Somebody, somebody, I ain't got my chest out today. Look, but, hey, let me tell you something. You drop at least a fifty dollar. You drop a fifty dollar super chat. The bottom button go. <laughs> <laughs> the bottom button go, baby girl. Fifty dollars, all right? I'm on sale today. Okay, <laughs> but no, that's some that's some that's Great some game. really good game. You move out the house, that puts you at a disadvantage in the courts. Give me one more. For custody? Yes, for custody of the kids. Mm. Yeah, Not done. being involved. Like if you don't know the kids, you don't go to PTAs, you don't know who their doctor is. That's a problem. Yeah. And because I'll subpoena a teacher. Wow. Quit. How many times have you seen him? Kind of thing. Hey, you know, tell me about the minor child school and, you know, their grades and what kind of student are they? Oh, they're great. Da, 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 da. Okay. So how many PTA meetings have you had? Oh, we've had this many. Who normally attends those meetings? What about this one? Th this one, this one just was put up by, um, Ooh, I'm trying. Oh, Corey. I wanted to you listen. You got to put the pronounce of that first name. Neem, I'm thinking of Neem. Maybe the K is silent. Neem McCord. She says, men, put your name on the birth certificate. Mm. That doesn't do anything. No, nothing. Wow. Because I, I think I heard it. I think I heard of that. You heard it from me. Okay. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> She's spicy. And it doesn't help. It doesn't do anything. Mm. That's a that's a misconception that a lot of people think. If you put your name on the birth certificate, right. that gives you some sort of right. Not in the state of Georgia, it doesn't. No. Nah. No, nah, it doesn't. I do, I do want to ask, um, at... At what point, or what does it take for uh, in in court situation where they bring the kids up to the stand? To, uh, to that's a really good that. question. Um, usually, there's some really contested custody issues, mm -hmm. right? 
And normally what we use is a guardian ad litem. Okay. That is an advocate that represents the best interest of the child. Because the judges really don't like bringing children into court unless they absolutely have to, right? There's usually some allegation of abuse, whether physical, sexual, mental, something is going on. Or like I said, a really, really, really contested custody issue. So the last case I had where a child actually came to court and a guardian ad litem was on the case was where a grandparent was trying to take custody from a dad and the mom had passed away. Right. So that was very contested. There were a lot of issues there and the judge needed to talk directly to the child just to find out how they felt. And um, in those cases, the guardian ad litem is there to kind of bridge that gap to keep the child out of the court. The guardian ad litem can go to the house, right? They can go to both parents' houses, look at the environment. They talk to the child directly. They talk to the teachers. They talk to, you know, the principal, the friends, the doctors and everything. And they come up with a report that they give to the court on their recommendations. Now their recommendation isn't always law, but some judges do rely heavily on it. Yeah. And I think that's important because when you, when you start talking about custody and uh, you know, going to court or trying to avoid to go to the court, there are some statements that may be made, meaning, you know, he's not involved. um, You know, he uh, he doesn't do what he's supposed to. You know what I what I found out, which I think is crazy, is it seems like the I guess the deadbeat they go unscathed. Like okay, he a deadbeat, whatever. But somebody who's trying to be involved, he gets hell. He gets hell sometimes, trying to uh, either you know get custody or just be more involved um, in that child's life, and because of issues between the two parents you know that can get really really messy and then go to the court then well i mean deadbeats go on skate because they don't do anything there's nothing to enforce or yeah. like they lose not even right. the law can get money from uh, well, them. The, really realistically <laughs> i mean the law cannot make you be a present father yeah right if you went to court and got 50 50 custody of your kid and decided i ain't picking their ass up right What's the court going to do? Okay, you're not picking them up. The only thing they're going to do is take the time away from you. They're not going to make you do it. Yeah. But it is those dads that want the time and want to be there and what you're going to have to fight for that because you're trying to get the time from mom. And most moms are not just going to give it to you willingly, even though some of them should. Because, hell, who don't need a break? Like, let him go with his daddy. (laughs) But, you know, that's just the reality of it. Yeah. So I want to make a correction real quick because I always want to get the members right. I want to show love. In Kim. Shout out to In Kim. And uh, Rob, let me ask you, I'm emotionally, yeah. I mean, how damaging would you say divorce? Like, what kind of toll did it divorce take on you emotionally? Yeah, uh, the first one, not too much. Okay. <laughs> I was still uh, I was still in mid-20s. And so I was like, you know what? I'm not married. I can actually say that I'm single and I can go out here and date or not. Um, but I would say a little bit later on in life um, time, the time we were together was 10 years. You know, so that's that's a decade, right? Right. And, and so being together that long, and we were a blended family. So when when we split, it was we literally severed everything. That's what we decided to do, and that's relationships with the other children and all that. And we we just figured that that would be better um, versus you know the the kids trying to figure out what's really going on. Is there a chance? Uh, oh, I saw your mom with someone. I saw your dad with someone. You know, so we just decided to sever the ties. But uh, di- divorce is a, is a death of a relationship, mm-hmm. you know. And so you, you have to properly grieve through that. You have to work through that, and then you have to re-identify yourself because you were once a husband to that person. You was once a wife to that person. So that identity is going to look different now. Yeah. You know, and uh, to some degree people lost their identity. And so now you got to find it, not yeah. even re-identify who is you. Right. Right. And so I think that's the toughest part um, about it. Uh, honestly, for me, because um, it was my second divorce, um, I went through the mourning stage, but at the same time, I was excited. <laughs> I was excited because I had an opportunity to build some relationships that I felt like I lost or got buried because I was in this this marriage and uh, because I did certain things to keep peace in the household and hold my tongue on things that I didn't agree. So, uh, you know, it was an exciting time Um, when it came to dating. I was able to say uh, I'm not 
separated. Uh, we don't live together and, and just kind of go through all of that because I could be honest with myself and the people that I encounter, I can be transparent to them. But uh, but it was tough in the beginning, but I'm all right. And okay. One of the toughest things yeah. too, man. I mean, I, I was in a household that experienced divorce. Yeah. You know, myself, and I experienced it on the side of the children. Yeah. And man, it is a really traumatic experience for the children because many times what ends up happening is the parents unknowingly they get so toxic that they actually start putting pressure on the children to definitely. choose sides. Oh definitely. They literally start like put it like if you start showing any favor to either side they'll start treating you a certain way yeah. because of how they feel. And that's when the shit really gets off the wall. Did you see like any specific like impact yeah. that they had on the kids? Like did they come out later when it was adults and kind of talk to you about it? Or, yeah. Like what did they tell you yeah. that experience was? Uh, absolutely. Now, uh, my dynamic was um, I had two teenage children that during that time frame became adult children. So not necessarily those. But I did have, but but I do have two daughters and they experienced um, a lot to the point to where, um, you know, we had to have some therapy and we had to have some really uncomfortable conversations about how they felt during certain times. And so some things that I had no clue that went on, um, I had to listen to my daughter share that. Uh, and they shared that individually and they shared it collectively. So uh, it was tough. I mean, I was pissed off. You know, at the same time, I had to keep my composure and let them know that how they felt. I value that. Um, and even though we're not together, it's still important that you you express to me any anything at any time. Right. And so it was it was really, really tough. And uh, I, I would tell anyone to really take in consideration if you're going to be in a dynamic of a blended family, you have to take in consideration every possible scenario and what i mean by that is uh the parents of the other children the grandparents of the other the influences the friendships of the uh, of the other uh side even the interaction individually because there was four children right yeah and so uh you know three ganging up on one two two and two one of you know that type of thing so uh, you have to really take a look at that, and and what I would say, what I would say is going back to the the, the business, you got to you got to create a business plan on how, on how your household is going to work because the biggest thing uh, that we did not do is create a new family plan because you've been running things a certain way with your kids. I've uh, for years and I've been doing the same. So when we come together, the kids are accustomed to a certain lifestyle, uh, a certain rewards, certain, um, you know, just just things that they were accustomed to. So we had to have that. We needed to have that conversation so that when we had this blended family, the kids aren't like, well, why do they get to do this? And we don't. Or why do you favor them? And even to the point to where my kids were like, you live with them. And, you know, we, we come to you our scheduled time. Right. Because before that, they would come to my house. They didn't have to share space. They didn't have to share energy. They didn't have to share any of that. So um, that was something that I could have done a better job with the transition or realize if am I really, truly ready for this transition? I um I I, I I like that you were vulnerable and sharing that with us. And um, as we get ready to close out in a few minutes, guys, listen, I'm going to drop the link to the subscribe button as well as the membership. Guys, once we get to 100 members, Sashan and I are going to do something very special for when yeah. we get to 100 members. But I want to make sure we, we we get some some practical understanding of what divorce actually looks like. Yeah. So, Brittany, let me ask you. Let me ask the breakup lawyer about how much does it cost for divorce? Not not what happens on the back end, but just up front through the legal process. And how long does a divorce last? Like how much of a sentence, so to speak, am I in for for this process? I always tell my clients to anticipate um, of divorce taking at least a year. Right. Oh, it can take less time than that. But that just depends on if you can settle the case earlier or not. Right. But there are a lot of deadlines and um, time frames that you legally have to respond to things. So when I file my initial petition for divorce, you have 30 days to respond to that, right? Discovery is six months from the 30 days that 
um, excuse me, discovery is six months after your answer and counterclaim was due, right? Then you have in Fulton County, you have a 30 day status conference and you have a 60 day status conference and you have a 90 day status conference and you have a 120 day, right? So you're already halfway through the process just in that. Sometimes you can go to mediation, you can get it done earlier than that. And then sometimes you can't at that point, then you have to wait for a final hearing or a trial yeah. that can all take a year or more, right? So I always tell my clients anticipate at least a year and potentially more, depending on how many assets you have, how contested the divorce is. Yeah. Um, some I've had some take five years, right? So um Damn. it's gonna take a while. Don't get in there and think that you're gonna get out in 30 days unless you've already come in with an agreement. Now, if you have an uncontested divorce, y'all have agreed to everything, y'all signed on the dotted line, that can take about 30 days. But anything after that, at least a year. And in terms of price, a standard divorce is going to cost you around a $5,000 retainer. That's your sure initial retainer, right? Um, I always tell my clients to anticipate to replenish your retainer at least once. So budget around $10,000. Unless you don't have any assets to fight over. There's literally nothing there. No kids, no nothing. It shouldn't take, it shouldn't cost that much. But, you know, sometimes people, people will often fight about nothing. So budget anywhere between five to ten thousand dollars wow and do you see typically after the divorce process is over mm -hmm. in your opinion mm -hmm. do you feel like people are actually better than they were like do you actually see and like a progression or can you say that this was what they really needed or in some cases do you actually think that they probably should have actually went in there and stuck out the divorce and just your personal opinion from what you see I think everybody ends up growing from it, right? Mm -hmm. If you're the spouse that was um, felt wronged, then there's some sort of liberation there, freedom that they have. They get to become a new person um, and grow from their experience, right? If you are the spouse that did the wrongdoing, it may take a while to get over the guilt and yeah. the grief and the regret, but then they end up growing as well, right? Yeah. And learning from mistakes and not repeating them in the future. So I think that it can be for each partner's benefit Honestly, if they take the do the time and the reflection and, you know, um, actually go to therapy and figure out how to become the type of partner that they will want to be with. Man, let me tell you, Brittany, that was phenomenal, man. Yeah. I think both of you guys, Brittany and Rob, both of y'all came in here and really dropped some game. You gave some good testimonies and some things sure. you've been through. And Brittany, you've had, I mean, you've seen countless amount of people, case after case after case. And, you know, I'll be, I'll be giving you hell sometimes, you Brittany, <laughs> but I absolutely <laughs> love and respect your expertise and your knowledge. You are, you, one thing I cannot say is you do not know your business and your game. So anybody, Thanks. just so y'all know, if you guys are in Atlanta and you are in some experience or in some relationship that you have literally tried countless amount of times over and over you've done the therapy you've pretty much checked all the boxes all the boxes and you just feel like this is the only option i absolutely recommend if you're considering this a consultation with Brittany right here i think um, ryan has been putting the link in here hopefully y'all not in that damn situation y'all watch Hall initiated <laughs> we trying to keep y'all out the damn divorce court Stay but together. again what we constantly would do is be a resource for you guys, regardless of where you are on the spectrum of relationships. Because at the end of the day, I mean, look, there's certain things that's just out of our control. Yeah. So we want to be there for you guys. So again, thank you so much for every, uh, you know, for giving us your time here. I got Facts. a good feeling this won't be the last time mm. you're here. That's what you said the last time. And, and look where you're at. <laughs> <laughs> Magic Crystal Ball is working over here, damn it. It is working. Ryan. Man, what you got for the people before we get up out of here, man? Yo, so real quick, I'm going to drop the link one more time, guys. Unfortunately, we did not hit our goal of 15 YouTube members, but that's okay because yeah. I know on Monday, we go crazy on Mondays at 8, just like we did today at 8. I know we're going to hit that 100 goal immediately on Monday. I already know we're going to get 30, 30 on Monday. But for those of you, this is the thing, for those of you, like I told you, we're going to make sure that we take your input. So it's a couple of polls that I'm going to be dropping over the next week. And I want my members to chime in on those polls. Because only. like I said, you're going to determine who we have, 
what we talk about and everything that we do so if you answer that poll we'll know what specific directions to move in guys and we got some really special stuff going in i yeah. hope y'all see the production is changing so y'all see the sound has sounds a lot better right yeah. you see the pop-ups for the super chats in the comments on the screen you see that probably that little late night special we actually gonna get that logo redone it's gonna look all pretty and beautiful for the production but one of the big things that we're gonna start doing is bringing up guests virtually like when i say guests i mean our members bringing mm. you up virtually to actually we can see you mm. ask your questions so we're about to get extremely creative with these shows guys so make sure you join the youtube membership asap and we got a super chat here listen people love one another going into marriage but hate one another during divorce <laughs> it should be amicable does love get lost and people get toxic plus self-serving? As a culture, we need to normalize healthy, unconditional love. Shanetta, I am 100% with you. Shout out to Shanetta. Shanetta is always here, always showing love. And, and listen, T&P, listen, T&P, I don't want to see another comment for you until you join the membership. That's <laughs> it, you T&P. <laughs> Not one other comment because you're too active to not be rocking with us in the membership. The first right now. hundred members, guys, something very special is going to happen to you guys. The very first hundred members, our founders, we are going to do something very, very special. Lano, take TP comment off. She ain't a member right now. She don't get on there. <laughs> but listen, here's what I'm gonna tell y'all. Again, we got the members only polls coming. We got some dope things happening for you guys. Make sure you at least before we end this, subscribe to the channel, y'all. Y'all see what we're doing. This is every Monday and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Every Monday and Wednesday night, y'all get to come in here, engage with us, and we are not stopping. The value will not slow down. Shout out to KN. She said she coming in person. K, Ooh. I believe you. And shout out to Celestine Bennett. Just join the membership. We about to go hey. crazy, y'all. We are going crazy. crazy. Me. Absolutely, absolutely. So, guys, go ahead and subscribe, like I said, because we about to get out of here. Thank you guys again. Thank you guys for tuning in to sure. another episode of Hardly Initiated. Listen, we are out.